Ah, my head, aside from all the legal disgusting shit we're going to talk about, how have you been, Michael? I've been all right. I mean, I was just, you saw probably the pictures. I was just at a Comic Con right after watching Venom. So that almost made up for how bad the film was. <laughs> almost? Or definitely? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, you've seen the photo Alex Kingston was all over me pretty much. So, <laughs> so that was pretty good. Yeah. Well, at least it play. wasn't John Barrowman. Welcome, everyone. Jesus Christ. More <laughs> for the first time to Novel Podcast. This week, Fuck everything else. It's spum week. Yeah, we've been talking about it for those that have been... T- this is like our season arc. This is the bad wolf. Of this is our <laughs> empire's death. Spumtastic Eddie. And we are joined by our very own symbiote from another universe. Symbiote horse. <laughs> Represented by the horse. <laughs> horse of a man. That is Michael Wilson. What, once again, the unfortunate, many people would say, spum charm of the podcast. <laughs> Mr. Michael Wilson. Yes, spum is charm. Back. <laughs> I am Spump Chamedy. <laughs> How are you, Michael? I'm okay, thanks. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was just saying to you on uh, Discord when we were discussing me coming on this episode, I was like, oh, do you want me to discuss any of the great things I've been watching lately? We could talk about the Penguin or Agatha all along, how good that's doing, or Superman and Lois crushing it in its final season. No, we're going to talk about Venom 3. Okay, great. <laughs> Not just mm-hmm. Venom 3. George Conte. No, all the first. spam. <laughs> spam everywhere. Well, I'm all caught up. I've seen them all, and I do own, sadly, two of them. So. But oh, for December are not happening. I might have to turn the camera off. It's, it's too, too intense. Much, too too intense. much for the internet. Let me find a spam. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm in the spam universe. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> Give me a hell no. I will eat you, Stone Cold. <laughs> Why not search for a spam picture? Uh, just um, dodgy venom pick. Dodgy venom pick. Uh, dodgy venom. Yeah, Tom Hardy. In other words, because this isn't the character at all. Shots fired. But before we get to venom, <laughs> shots fired. I mean, do you want to talk about like gloss over anything nice you've seen, Mike? I mean, I can give you five minutes. <laughs> no, but I just basically wanted to say what I already had, which was. Uh, if, like me, you were uh, reluctant uh, to watch The Penguin because you kind of got sick of stuff without Batman in that's set in the Batman universe or you weren't sure about it or you might have been slightly lukewarm on the Batman movie, uh, ignore all of that. It is probably the best show of the year. <laughs> it's fantastic. It is. Yeah, if you can accept the fact that Batman's really shit at his job because, let's be honest, there's huge <laughs> gang wars happening right in his backyard and he's nowhere to be seen. <laughs> Other than that, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's only two years in. Yeah, that's pretty much the argument everyone's making. It's like he's only a year two Batman. He's, he, he, you know, he's busy, you know, making a name for himself, beating up random muggers or whatever somewhere. <laughs> but no, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> something's in the way these days, always. <laughs> but no, that was great. And like I said, um, Agatha all along, I knew it was going to be good, even though everybody was like, "Oh, nobody asked for this, nobody wants it," and it turned out it's been really great. As me, we, uh, record this, we got one me. double bill. Tonight. Personally, <laughs> I'm still up to episode. I'm about to watch episode six, but I've liked okay, what I've well, seen of Agatha. I've liked what I've seen of Agatha. Ven- oh, Penguin, cool. Penguin, I've yet to start. Um, but I did mm. watch uh, Batman the other night. Good old Matt Reeves. I, you know that universe. I'm just ecstatic for anything that man can do. Penguin, I wouldn't recommend binge watching because it's really intense. So you're gonna want a little break <laughs> in between episodes. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> so it's almost like a horror film. It's that intense. It's That's not, I mean, it's not like gross or just, yeah, <laughs> Matt Smith yeah. more. Nice. Um, yeah, that's no pretty 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 to Matt Smith. The man's 42. Where the fuck did that time go? Wow. Oh, today? Time it's recording? Yesterday. Yesterday. It's yesterday. Damn. Yesterday. Oh. I didn't have it on my Google Canada, so I'm sorry. I, I, wasn't aware. I just, someone tweeted it and I was like, oh, oh shit, happy Matt Smith 42. day. 42. Damn. He's as old as that Chris Jimno episode. <laughs> you could have made a Hitchhiker's Guide reference or, you know, reference my age or anything, and you had to go with that Chris Chibnall episode. Whatever. No. <laughs> well, Matt Smith is the answer to life, universe, and everything. I mean, he was the fucking Big Bang himself. He was Mr. <laughs> Let's Have Sex in Morbius. That yeah, film we're going to talk about. And yeah, from that scene. <laughs> from that scene. Mr. Sex. That's what you oh, say. Oh, and Mr. Uh, Sex. <laughs> I, I keep forgetting to tell you, George, but just quickly before we do jump into everything, Spum, I have finished my rewatch of Doctor Who Season 1, if you ever managed to put together the... Uh, the round table of people that reviewed episodes for you last year or this year. Um, that's still that's still on the cards. I mean, we are recording our Christmas special. I mean, for the future. 
in, mm. uh, with Andy on Monday, where we're going to drink Kylie Minogue wine and watch Voyage of the Damned. Nice. Yeah. So I'll just do the Australian impression for about an hour and then <laughs> just go to sleep, I reckon. That's, uh, speaking of your impressions, I'm actually missing what we do in the shadows to be here. I haven't watched it yet. Today's new one. So <laughs> I need to I need to fucking catch up on that. So at work, um, they've got the Halloween music on and mm. that's resorted to just theme tunes. Um, <laughs> Stranger Things like gets a, gets a couple a day and obviously then so um running up that hill by kate bush is then played like not long after that mm. but they played the what we do in the shadows theme i generally wow. stopped what i was doing and listened to the whole song you're dead and out of this world <laughs> etc yeah it's yeah. amazing yeah. You sold out your dream to the world. Stay dead, stay dead, stay dead, stay dead. Stay dead, just like Lotus Farm. Yeah, Lotus Farm. Oh, Matt Berry, who did Matt Berry play in the Slum Universe, Mike? Before Jay started. Jonah James. <laughs> oh, you know what? I if you hadn't already, fight, man. If you hadn't already <laughs> cast, uh, if you hadn't already cast Aaron Taylor Johnson, he'd have made a fantastic, more traditional Craven. <laughs> oh my god, he would have. Uh, so camp. Just picture Matt Berry in the lion vest, like, I'm going to hunt and kill you. <laughs> lion vest, <laughs> fire lasers. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need I your African herb calypso to cure me. <laughs> <laughs> Adrian Toomes, this is something to do with Spider Man, <laughs> I think. <laughs> But no, as oh, I was saying, a moving rhino oh, over there. Oh my god, have you seen this rhinoceros? <laughs> this giant rhino. No, what was a nice, pleasant surprise is I did see a movie that I wasn't expecting anything from that turned out to be probably one of my favorites of the year on the same day I saw Venom 3. Uh, oh, I went about Venom 3. It was uh, an animated film called The Wild Robot, which also yeah. features the voice of one Matthew Berry in there. Oh my god. Oh wow, I want to watch it now. Is right he the wild second. robot? No, he's the he's the beaver. <laughs> <laughs> Harry can't God say that about that. He's a beaver. Beaver, activate. <laughs> yeah, the, the robot or starts to understand the forest animals, and it's great. Matt Berry's like, "Don't make fun of me just because I'm making a dam. You'll regret it when you all need it when the rain comes." <laughs> Stuff like this. <laughs> Oh. I fucking love that man so much. <laughs> I've heard I've heard great things about the Wild Robot. Yes, a lot of people have said it's got because I've oh, seen so some reason I've yeah. seen so many animated movies this year. It's almost like I have a child. But, yeah, um, I mean, who would have known? <laughs> well, that's the sort of thing you could watch with your kid as well. And yeah. and the sequels in development. So that oh, says wow. it right there. Go and see the Wild Robot, unrelated it's to Sony at all. I don't think it's not related. Are not we saying? Sony. Uh, but are we saying that? Dream go and see stuff they actually want to see and not <laughs> see this. Is that what uh, <laughs> But describe this. Because out of the five in universe spums, I think <laughs> there might only be one of them that I would go back to. Oh, I'll leave you guys in the comments and you. Is it the... Web? <laughs> for the wrong no, but not for the wrong reasons. <laughs> That's no. number two. I'll just go <laughs> no. no. Venom 1. Venom 3. <laughs> Venom 2. Is it Venom 2? Because that movie had enough carnage in it, and I want to go back because that's how much that movie messed up my life. <laughs> mm. I mean, it's Venom 1 for the for the first Woody Harrelson wig, for me. That's, that's mm. where all the money is, right there. The and Ron he's with Ronald McDonald. It's going to be... <laughs> but... Yeah. Yeah, what is the spum, Connor, for people that don't know? <laughs> the Sony picture universe of Marvel characters, i.e. we want the Spider-Man license, but guess what? We have to share them with our next-door neighbours known as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No one's ever heard of them. But, th guys, we've got every other character. Let's build a universe around the main character. But here's the catch. Let's not have him in it. And I know that's pain painful enough to admit. And I know we can't have it for legal reasons. But let's make pointless villain films in a universe where they're going to not talk about the man that they're supposed to be up against. And there's no sign of him actually ever showing up in this poxy mess of a universe. But, yeah, villains. But make them likeable? Question mark? Now, that's not fair, Connor, because Spider-Man does turn up on a TV for 15 seconds at the end of Venom 2. Oh, no, you mean that guy. That guy. We are yeah, that going guy. to completely ignore him in future. 
Look at that, that boy, guy. Eddie. I want to lather him up and do sexy things with the Twinkie Man. Oh, he's dressed in a chicken. <laughs> oh, it's me, Holland. Don't be coming to attack me, Mr. Tomari. Oh, I'm really sorry. I just, uh, we're going to do Spider Man 4 and it's going to be hopefully more grounded in reality. Oh, try my new beer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Have a drink with, on me. Said with the utmost respect for Tom Holland because, like, what a guy. Absolutely. What a man. I just, I just love the Mr. Sunday movies impression of Tom Holland. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, honestly, I fucking love those guys. And we're, we're, that's where the spum name comes from. They, they, from the, they christen the spum. <laughs> Two, two <laughs> lovely Australian men, Chris and the Spum, and now we have to talk about it. So, all right, no, good stuff. I think this all kind of stems from if I, I mean, anyone feel free to interrupt me if I'm wrong, but when the series of Spider Man got rebuted, 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 yeah. rebuted yeah. disputed by the disputed. Sinister Six, yeah, disputed. Matt Berry was the lawyer. Um, <laughs> yeah. When the reboot was being developed for The Amazing Spider-Man, then there was more of a thing, mainly from um, Amy Pascal and Avi Arad, you know, let's call them the great interferers, because Avi Arad has wanted a Venom <laughs> film since the Toy Biz saved yeah. Marvel in the 90s, because yeah, in, the, in the 90s, Venom was relevant. Yeah. So he's always wanted a Venom film. And then it was like, hmm, let's put the corridor of origin stories in Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> the corridor, yeah. And we're going to start, you know, having spin-off films and Sinister Six films and Spider-Man will be in them, but then it'll also be in Sp Amazing Spider-Man 3 and 4. And all those things will definitely happen. And then it all just went kaput. Kaput. But the idea stayed kaput. for Venom to be... I mean, I think <clears throat> originally they wanted Topher Grace Venom to return, but we saw the fucking mm. skeleton. So part of me wishes we'd seen that version, because that would have been... How'd you write out of that one? <laughs> Judging by the writing skill of the movies that we have seen... Would it have made much difference? Probably not. Um, but 2018, we got the first garbage fire. Dumpster fire. Oh, mess. No. That is Venom, the first one. Now, I know a lot of people that like this one. I like quite... this one. I was just going to say, you say dumpster fire. This is easily the best one of the five. <laughs> Big. Not yeah. Morbius. <laughs> yeah, Morbius, and, Morbius and Venom 3 are fighting it out for bottom spot with me at the minute. So. I don't know. So does that mean Madam Web is definitely at least number three? I quite it enjoyed than Madam Web. Web. I, that's, that's a solid number two for me. I, I really think that film was slightly overheated, and if it wasn't part of this mess of a universe... Um, I should also clarify, by the way, that to your point, it also features Peter Parker, so arguably that film also has Spider-Man in it, kind of. <laughs> it's the most Spider Man. Spider Boy. <laughs> He's Spider Baby. <laughs> My main problem with this come out of the fact that, you know, Venom exists <clears throat> because of Spider Man. Like the yes, yeah. like, to the suit. Yes. And then Peter has that whole dark arc. You know, in the film for you kids, it's when he goes emo and brushes his hair the other way and then beats up a Did woman it? in a jazz bar, like we all do when we're angry. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then yeah. dig on this. And then he tries to fuck Bryce Dallas Howard, and you can hardly blame him. But um, I'm going to throw some dirt in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like Bill Goblin Jr., you're going to cry? Um, you're going to cry, yeah. But without that, he's just a big, gloopy puddle of Go. shit. And he just, you know, <laughs> Go shit. eat fucking <clears throat> turd in the wind. He's just going to eat people and chocolate and tater dots. And on my planet, I'm kind of a loser like you. you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I would argue that, you know, at least I think without Tom Hardy in these films, then the spum goes the way of the dark universe and just has one mm. film and just, I think, it collapses happen. in up its own ass. So at least this one done well enough for people to go, oh, well, maybe we'll see more of these. And they're like, yeah, we'll do a second one and then we'll do a different character. And you won't, yeah. and you won't fucking be prepared for the fact that we're just every film's going to be a copy of the hero mm. fighting at the end. You know, big yeah. grey blob fights big black blob. There's a red one. This is a red one. one. Oh shit! There's a red one. Yeah. Um, a two, red one. two weirdly sex crazed wizards, uh, um, vampires <laughs> at the end of Morbius. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Dumbledore's sons in it. Um, all the pit. Fucking Madam Web's a fucking thing and a half. That's, that's a that's a real web well, of a mess. I like it because it's you know some women beating up an abusive man. Yeah. And I think that, you know, Female rights it's a lot feminism. like Twitter, isn't it, really? 
<laughs> I'll tell you now, if Venom and Madame Web had come out in like 1996, I think they'd be praised as decent movies. It's just that we've I been so be spoiled by good <laughs> comic book adaptations. There's only ever going to be one, Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> But um, what did you guys did you guys see this one in the cinema? What did you think of it when you first saw it? Uh, Mike, do you want to go first? Yeah, I saw the first Venom in the cinema, and like everybody else at the time, I was well, I was annoyed like you about like skipping the whole Spider Man origin story thing. But you know, just to to kind of prove that you know the counterpoint to that, I would say that you can still do Venom stories without Spider Man. The comics have done it. Mm. You know, the lethal protector arcs and stuff. It's just that the films just don't seem to really know what they're doing with that. And it's certainly not enough to sustain three films. Um, but yeah, no, the first Venom I kind of liked because like everybody else, it was, it was kind of a throwback, like I said, to more of a nineties, like, Oh, we don't, we're still a bit reluctant to dip our toes into comic book movies, but we'll try a bit of an action film. And it was, it, it felt like it, whether it was intentional or not, it kind of knew what it was, that it was just ridiculous and leaned into it. And, Tom Hardy was arguing with himself and diving into lobster tanks and stuff. And it was like, all right, if you have to, if you have to exist Venom movie, at least know that you're ridiculous and daft and I can get a bit of fun out of watching you for, you know, mystery science theater style, you know, comedy value, I guess. And it's enjoyable enough on that level. It's not a, I mean, it's not good, but it's not a terrible movie. Um, I thought anyway, and I was like, well, I enjoyed that 90 minutes or whatever that flew by in the cinema and it was fine. We got to see a little bit of actual, you know, Venom, and yeah, it was, the, the end was terrible, it was like you said, like the end of all three of them, it just devolves into different coloured CGI blobs, but I mean, five Transformers movies did that and made billions, so, <laughs> you know, we can't really complain. Thank yeah, what, what do we know? What do we know? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to sound copy and pasty, but yeah, I, go, I remember distinctly going into 2018's Venom, and I left that first completely sort of baffled by how different this characterization was compared to, again, the Spider-Man origin. And he's an alien and he's meant to eat people. But wait, he's just a, a comedic ste- a sketch inside Tom Hardy's head. And they're trying to make him funny and likable. But then, again, having read upon the Lethal Protector arcs and solo Venom stories in the comic like you illustrated, Mike, um yeah venom does have some weird quirky lines himself in the comics so upon rewatch and like many times later yeah it isn't as much of a harrowing issue as it was back then but i just remember one of the few times going into the cinema and sort of almost being speechless not because i didn't particularly like or enjoy it at the time but because it was just such a different take on what i had known as venom at that time and the image of him in my head was completely gone out the window like a turd in the wind um yeah, um, I thought Riz, I liked Riz Ahmed's villain. Um, I liked him. It was sort of my introductory, like introduction to him. Um, again, not a hot dumpster fire of a mess like George suggested. Um, and I liked Michelle Williams. He better, so, I think, yeah. kept him completely divorced from the symbiote because, like, he was better as a threat just as the dude. And then as soon as he became whatever that grey mess, it's got a name. Uh, but I don't know what freaking name. Riot. Is. <laughs> it's meant to be right. Is that yeah, Riot? Riot? It's like you, I didn't really need that. You could have just had it be Riz no, no, Ahmed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I yeah. I like for this. I've gone like well, not necessarily for this, but because of the third movie, I sort of done the whole trilogy over the weekend. So all three of these are mega fresh in my head. But yeah, I. It's not the worst one. It's kind of the most serious yet. It takes half the movie for Venom to then properly get introduced into the movie because essentially it's Tom Hardy been awkward with his missus and then you know he's to be in the whole daily bugle reporter i'm gonna break into the evil science lab that's not oscorp um and then oh look the goo that's moving ah i'm in your head and i'm never gonna leave you ever again i want to eat mrs chang <laughs> that's venom the movie um yeah it's venom the movie yeah venom one anyway and he's very like sweaty and sticky tom hardy in this film oh yeah <laughs> He's very like covered in ooze. <laughs> he's, ooze he's oozing in charisma. Like, he's, got, he's got a thin layer of ooze on him at all times. Like a very sweaty yeah. guy. Nah, he did not have a shower. <laughs> well, like, is how and, it, the, and the yeah. lobster tank bit, he famously just got in there and did that. Thank fuck it wasn't a real lobster. <laughs> <laughs> you imagine? Oh, um, I mean, I'll, yeah, it's probably the most sort of closest thing to a, resembling a movie out of all five of these. Yeah, that's giving it a compliment. I yeah. mean, 
I don't think there's a second act. I don't really remember it starting or ending. I think it's just act one and act three. But I think yeah. you can say that for most of these films. No, especially I, I, I would counter that and say the second act is where it's probably the best because that's when you get all the like comedy odd couple Eddie and Venom in their apartment kind of shtick that they yeah. look back fondly on in Venom 3. It's when he's like squirting the ketchup everywhere and making the food and he's got like tons of chickens for the symbiote to eat and making a bunch of noise and his neighbor's like, oh, what's noise is going on out there? And then he appears and growls at them and like, oh God, you're a monster thing. Oh. And it's just like, they, they know they're playing it for kind of weird, you know, this is a buddy comedy kind of thing at that point. I say either, I say neither, ta-da. <laughs> Let's call it all off, Eddie. <laughs> and that's when Venom spums all over Tom Hardy. Um, yeah. yeah, I think like it does feel like the pre MCU films, like it's very sort yeah. of of the early two thousands. Like if it had come out, early then, zeros, yeah, it would have yeah. just, I think, just fit in, and people would have probably liked it. And we'd be like, bring back the Tom Hardy Venom for Secret Wars. <laughs> I want to see him. Let him have a cameo in Deadpool Wolverine. Damn but, it! Um, yeah, it's just a, sh it's just the fact that like. The character can be so good and so interesting when done right that it's like it was always off on the bad foot. And the fact that, you know, we thought at one point he could face Spider Man. And as, you know, <clears throat> as currently, this version of Venom is still not faced off against Spider Man. So we've still not probably got never any, will. you know, any crossover like that. Even though um, the producer said that Venom would have clear intersection points between other films, not only in the spum. I mean, they didn't say spam. I've I've said that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the MCU as a whole, there would be clear intersection points throughout all this and all of these films. Well, we can think of one that we'll we'll discuss later. There's one, but they immediately undo it. <laughs> yeah. Well, if George keeps this in the edit, hello, pasty sheep viewers. <laughs> uh, what did you think of Venom: The Last Dance if you went to see it? And what did you think of the Spum or the Sony Spider-Man universe? Is there a favourite one that you have? Do you have a least favourite? There are five of them, believe it or not. Have you seen them all? <laughs> Hello. Hello That's there. my ex. What? I can hear you, yes. <laughs> yes, I can hear you, Clem Fandango. <laughs> You're coming through. Or are you? No, nope, you've gone again. <laughs> oh, technology. Normally, StreamYard is better than this. One out of ten, if we were to score it from, from my perspective, but like I like I watch it on Netflix. That it's that kind of film. It's a background movie, and it's it's like you you know you have turned me around to the fact that it is probably the the most competent one of the five. It's <laughs> on a, on the surface of pl palette, yeah, on the serviceable palette. But I can't even talk. Never mind. Fuck it out. He's been he's never taken by Venom. <laughs> Venom's crawled into his <laughs> anus, and now he can't speak. Yeah. Mike, um, <laughs> how do you round up Venom one? <laughs> Well, I do own Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage on Blu-ray, so I have to acknowledge that I like them that much, at least. Um, but I yeah, I think I think Venom so 1 probably... Are... Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> so yeah, I think, as, I said, as we said, Venom 1, I think it's not a great film, but it's the most competent. Uh, I mean, I'd probably give it like three stars out of five, six out of ten, <laughs> if I'm being uh, honest, but it's watchable enough, and it seems to be the only one where Venom, you know, actually fights crime. It's like he, he fights bad guys in the first movie, and the second one he goes to a rave, and the third one he's off on a road trip. So it's the only one where he actually does any fighting of things, <laughs> other than the, you know, big blobs. But uh, yeah, it's it's fine, is about the best I can say. It's, it's good for a laugh, and it's probably going to be the best Venom film we'll get for a while. <laughs> Forever, if ever. Yeah. So where, where did Let There Be Carnage um, come for you? <laughs> it's not a great movie. It's not even a particularly good movie. But I, I felt like I, I, I have this thing where I kind of feel like I've got to own things for completism. And so when <laughs> Venom, you know, I had bought the first Venom, I was like, I may as well get the second one. Uh, why the heck not? And it was reduced in price or something. And it's another one of those things where I, I can acknowledge it's terrible. But just on a geek level, I enjoy seeing Carnage in a film. And like, again, like the first Venom, it's nice to see Woody Harrelson just not giving a crap and <laughs> going all out. And it, there's comedy value in watching these great, like, Oscar winning actors like Naomi Aki's in there. And uh, no, sorry, Naomi Harris is in there. And uh, Woody Harrelson, Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams, uh, and <laughs> Stephen Graham. 
and they're all Oscar winning actors giving the worst performances of their career. So there's something interesting and funny about watching that and watching them try to make it serious that these, you know, two different coloured blobs are trying to eat each other and and invest that with any kind of uh, importance. So it's it's again, it's kind of like trashy fun, less so than the first one. They were certainly not good. And I think, yeah, they kind of in terms of the Venom trilogy, they gradually, for me, get worse as they go along. Oh, I've lost them again. Well, again, if you are still hearing just me on this recording, hello, viewers. Hopefully you heard my opinion of Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage. Did you see those movies? <laughs> no, I, I joke, I joke. No, it's, uh, it's just odd, isn't it? I'm curious how many people are fans of Venom the character. Maybe you could leave that in the comments. Do you have a favourite story arc in the comics? I personally like the whole birth of Venom from the Spider-Man storyline. And again, it's kind of sad that Spider-Man 3 is probably the closest and best we'll get to that. Fairly faithful at times. But uh, yeah, just sad. <laughs> yeah, it's a shame. Um, what else? What else? What else? I'm curious to see how many people will see Venom. I think I'm, I'm kind of in the minority when it comes to Venom. I think a lot of people seem to think it's the best of them. And uh, people seem to be enjoying it, maybe on some level. So who knows? Me, I just yeah, couldn't do with it. <laughs> we'll probably get into reasons why if the uh, stream begins to work again. If they don't come back soon, I'm going to start playing some elevator music or something just to keep you guys entertained. Do -do 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 -do. <laughs> Me and Mrs. Chen will have a little dance. Spoiler alert. <laughs> right. Um, Venom I 2? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, like, Venom 2, like Venom 1, is kind of, it's fun on the level of at least, you know, you can watch good Oscar-winning actors making idiots of themselves, and it's nice to see Carnage in a film. It's not something we'll probably ever see again, and no. I, can, I can sit and watch it while acknowledging it's really bad and trash. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not to diss Woody Harrelson, but Jesus Christ, it's, I don't know, it, it's Carnage, but not the sort of Carnage I was expecting. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, just carnage. Uh, I, but the thing that just annoys me right up and spoilers for those that didn't watch the movie, and I don't blame you if you didn't, but he's fucking dead. He's gone. He got eaten like a bit of chicken. So there's no more of him at all. <laughs> number three, he's gone. The, dang, the most dangerous symbiote. He's gone. gone. Schooled by yeah. a fucking comedian that's meant to be a serious actor. No offense to Tom Hardy, but. Yeah, just no. It's just carnage dying at the end was a bit sad, but no, won't miss it too much. It's just, it's just weird. Like carnage is such a dangerous fucking Spider-Man villain. Yeah, undetectable yeah. by Spidey sense. Um, sorry, I'm just uploading Matt Smith topless. Let me just there you go. <laughs> there we go. That's Connor's favourite scene in the movie. Um, it's it's just it's strange. Like it's quite short as well. This one, isn't it? I think this is like think one this of the one shortest is like ones. An hour and a half. I think they're yeah, all like ninety minutes. minutes. Yeah, they're not uh, they're not very long. Any of them, really. No, but I Thank feel like God. this one was particularly like an hour and a half, if not that, just over. It's his small mercies. <laughs> small um, carnage. Yeah. Small carnage. Um, I mean, Woody Harrelson's wig's better in this one. <laughs> um, it's it's also weird, like the age matchup, because he's like a, I mean. <laughs> He, he's um, not to sound ages, but he's meant to be a, a young, a young man in the nineties, and then it's he's like nearly sixty-year-old Woody Harrelson. It just doesn't <laughs> just doesn't line up. Something about my math seems to be incorrect. Math yeah. not be math. Yeah. Yeah. Supposed to be the same age roughly as Naomi Harris, like they grew up as kids together. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. You know what I will say about this film? Like my favorite thing about this film is towards the end mm. when um. Venom realizes that you know they have to use sound to weaken Carnage, and he looks at Shriek, and you think he's going to get like Shriek's going to team up with him and help, and he just twats her into that bell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I think that's one of that's my favorite spun scenes. They kind of they have to know at this point, like, and I kind of wish that's what was kind of missing from Venom Three. Was me was that it, it for me was that it was played quite straight, and it's like the best parts of the first two are when you acknowledge that this is just trash and lean into it and just make a fool of yourself <laughs> make it a bit funny you know yeah it's like they didn't sort of pick their tone 
like early on it was like oh we're gonna you know sort of like lean into more of like the the bonkers shit and then it just kind of like by the end it's like oh no but we're serious we're serious comic we're book gritty. films we're not dark night no we yeah. are gritty we I are mean, the lethal protector we have we have things to say about comic book films and, and how, aliens and aliens and goo and, and how much goo can have feelings. and women yeah and women <laughs> women do. with spider tits you know we've got a yeah. lot to say about these things Damn it. Yeah. but um <laughs> yeah i would i would agree that i like from you know i think the venom films just get worse yeah <sighs> which yeah. is a shame and it's also weird that it was like, yeah, we're going to do another... I know COVID happened, but it was like, next film, we'll do another Venom one. <laughs> and then we'll do Morbius. Whereas mm-hmm. I think if Morbius had come out and then this, I think people would have liked this more than they did. Because yeah, they're like, fuck it, yeah. that Morbius was shit. We're back to the good one. It's because they keep setting themselves up with blooming post credit scenes that promise something, though. And then they have to like hastily undo them or make a film that they've been promising you because of it. So we had to do Venom Let There Be Carnage because they introduced Woody Harrelson as Cletus Cathy at the end of the first one. So everyone would have been like, well, where's that film? Yeah. <laughs> what was the point of that? Yeah, exactly. I mean, it mm. also does have that weird moment where you're in, if you're in the cinema, you just turn to the person next to you and go, what the fuck? Fucking was that Reese Shearsmith? <laughs> it's like that vicar, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did something similar with Burn Gorman in Beetlejuice Two. I was like, "Is that yeah. Burn Gorman playing a priest?" It was. <laughs> it was. Oh. Yeah, definitely. But Owen, Owen, Owen Wilson, Owen, Owen, Owen Wilson. Wilson. Owen, wow. Owen Gorman. Oh my god! Uh, I mean, Beetlejuice. What is his fucking character's name? Owen. What? Owen Harper. Harper, right? Okay. Doctor <laughs> Owen Harper. Oh, Talks with medical Doctor officer. Doctor Harper. Spin off of Doctor Who, clearly. Doctor, Doctor Harper. Harper. Yeah. It was a. It was a stitch up between Doctor Who and my family, where you know. He, oh, he married into the dentist family from my family and then fucked John Barrowman probably. I don't know. I don't know what happens in these things anymore. Um, I mean, Stephen Graham's like set up to be like, yeah, it's, oh, you know, it's all don't about... Don't get me started on 3. that. That's another of my pet peeves with Venom 3 and it's it's a heavy yeah. spoiler, but I was so pissed off about what they do with this. Oh. Uh, how they it? treat actor of our generation, Stephen Graham. Oh. No, how they treat a character from the comics that I actually know and enjoy. <laughs> Played by an actor of our generation, Stephen, Stephen Graham. Graham. I mean, um, yeah. also the fact that, like, I mean, this is one of how many films are Circus directed at this point? Oh, God. I know he did a Jungle Book live action one that nobody liked because it wasn't Favreau. And, and it he's ended done... up on Netflix as well. Yeah, so, I don't know, maybe one that we don't know of, so possibly three. And I think he's directing one of the Gollum Lord of the Rings ones that are coming, at least. Yeah. Gollum, I see you where you were sleeping, my precious. Gollum, let there be Smeagol. Let there be Smeagol. Go on, directorial. What we got? What we got? Filmography. Um, Right, what's this? Second year. Breathe. I don't know what breathe is. Breathe 2017. Mowgli, Legend of the Jungle. (laughs) Mowgli. It's Mowgli. 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 I've never watched Jungle Book. And an Animal Farm. 2025. Oh, yeah, that was a Netflix version of the Animal Farm, like, redo as well, yeah. Yeah. George Orwell. So, all a fantastic track record for directing. I mean, to be fair, his second unit directing for, like, the Hobbit stuff is great. So, you know, but it couldn't have been any worse because the rest of that movie... And helped motion capture Godzilla 2014 and Age of Ultron. Yeah, he did, because he made, um, what's his name? Toby... Toby Jones. (laughs) Toby (laughs) Jones. What's his name? Tony, Toby, Tony, Kevin. T- Toby Kevin, yeah. yeah, Toby Jones. Toby Jones is Godzilla. I want to see that film. <laughs> Toby <laughs> Jones is Godzilla. Matt Berry as King Kong. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who could play Diddy Kong? Um, no, not Diddy Kong. What's his name? Kong Jr. Fucking Diddy Kong. That's bloody Donkey Kong. Yeah. Mario. 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 Chris, Chris Pratt joins the universe <laughs> as Mario fighting King Kong and Diddy Kong uh, and wow. some other fucking... Space Ape, and that isn't a Sony picture. That's a spun. That's a spun yeah, film. A I spun would spun say. Um, yeah, Twat in Shriek into the Bell. One of my favourite film moments, I think, ever. I think since Back to the Future One, that's been some of the best cinema we've ever seen. She um, almost deserves it for whatever that accent is that she's doing in the. Film. <laughs> it's almost like she's stuck in a persona between Miss Money Penny and her character from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, but then she's doing like deep South American. Like, I grew up with this word Harrison guy. Yeah, she just wants Forrest know. Gump. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what are you doing? I mean, I, I mentioned to you, or I, I put it in my letterbox review. Actually, I didn't mention it to you that like Venom Three 
must have set the record for number of British actors who are doing various degrees of American accents because essentially everyone in the film is British. I'm watching it and I'm like, yep, hang on. Chiwetel Ejiofor, Risa Fans, Juno Temple, Tom Hardy, and there was one other as well. And I'm like, they're all oh, Stephen Graham. And I was like, they're all British. There's not an American and, in this freaking thing. I mean, what was, what was Canal's voice like? Because, you know, circus. He's barely featured. It's just kind of, oh, I am trapped. Go get him, my dogs. I cannot follow you for reasons. Have a look at this hair. I can't look up because of contractual reasons. We didn't have we did look up in the post credit scene. That was what we had to wait for because that was so important. You had to look up and go, now I am awake. And then everyone was like, <laughs> ah, the whole fucking movie of your plan, you dumb. What? The scum universe is now, but I will continue on. Fine, I'll do it myself. Before. I mean... <laughs> it has something to do with Spider-Man, I think, but no more. I am now. I'm now? Where's Liam? Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, what would we rate Venom Let There Be Fartage? I Four? Think... I think I gave it like two stars, which would equate to four out of ten when I reviewed it for my channel, so I'll stick to that. <laughs> yeah, I think a four. Unanimous. We're equal. Four out of yeah. ten. <laughs> this is 40%. Same okay. level of shit. <laughs> mm. But we would all watch them drunk. Maybe yeah, one day. It might be better drunk. They Again, are. I have got them on Blu-ray. I've, <laughs> I've done it, you know. Well, there we go. Mm. We'll yeah. all get pissed and watch the spam. It's a fun double bill. We'll do no, we'll do all six when Craven's out, because that'll be it. That'll be the last the one. The last one. Oh look, a rhino. Oh, on. I can't believe we never got the Aunt May Secret Agent film. I can't believe we got the versions of that. Film. Rose Leslie could be the spum Aunt May. Oh, Me can. wife, Rose Leslie. I've got a dent in my knee. The fucking symbiote's infecting my body. Um now we get on to possibly Mike's favourite film in all of cinema. The mightiest Michael movies. M. Morbius intriguing Ugh. Jared Leto sexy vampire film on crutches. That's it. No. Just no. <laughs> well, what's what? I mean, for those that want our in-depth stuff, I mean, we did go in-depth on it whenever this film came out. I've blanked it from my memory since. Um, nothing has ever been the same. 22? 2022. Fuck, you know. yeah. Feels like Is a it? lifetime, but also like yesterday. <laughs> Well, it had a release in April 22, so it was April 22. Was it April? It was April. Last year? It feels like centuries ago. God. <laughs> oh, <it's obvious. laughs> Literally, yeah. that's mental. That was... Two what, years ago. what date in April did it come out? Oh, the exact date. Oh, let's have a UK date. Hang on. Let's have a UK yeah, date. Think of it, Madam Webb was just earlier this year. And even yeah, that feels like... Yeah, man. That's great. I mean, yeah. so... Um, <laughs> we'll get to that Run then. people through your thoughts on Morbius again, Michael, if they've heard. Um... Truly, the first, here. first of March, twenty twenty two. It's awful. Oh. It's just so bad. I mean, I, I, there's not really a lot I can say except yes, I'm one of the weird people that quite likes this character in the comics, and I even liked again. We've talked about this, George. The kind of comedy value way that they neuter him for the uh, kids cartoon because they're not allowed to, you know, mention yeah. the word blood or have anybody biting. So instead, he sucks plasma through plasma. holes in his hands. Yeah. Felicia, <laughs> my plasma. Yeah. So I kind of um, appreciate, like, as much as I like the character in the comics and he's kind of fun, I liked what they did there just for comedy value. And so I was like, well, Morbius has the potential to be good. I mean, it's vampires and there's all kinds of craziness. And Jared Leto, you know, at least tends to go all in for better crazy. or worse in his roles. And it was such a nothing movie. It's just absolute mm. turd. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it, yeah, it's a load of shit, really, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, there's there's no other way to gloss over it apart from the fact that it is just... It's disgusting. It's quite It spends like a solid hour with nothing happening whatsoever. And then when something's supposed to happen, it just becomes the worst, like, friggin' paper bag floating in the wind, friggin' special effects looking ridiculous. And it's like, what? I waited an hour for this? Just, Mm. ugh. Matt Smith's dance at least was funny, but that was terrible. And that's I mean, the whole that scene is great. Everything else, uh, questionable. <laughs> and do you guys know the story about? Oh, I forget what the name of the actor is now. Is it Tyrese, Tyrese Gibson oh, with the fucking robot arm? Yeah, he was supposed to be like a hugely important character from the comics, and he was told he would be and everything. And then all of his scenes got cut, and there's not even a mention of who he is. Which is yeah, just he just kind of appears like I think in like three scenes that I think equate to less than five minutes. Yeah, exactly. And then. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because I got this robot arm. Like I'm really like deep into it. Like, and this is because it's also the film where I think someone did 
a fake Scorsese tweet saying about how much he'd like loved Morbius. He's like, <laughs> oh my god, thank you. Like the you know, the OG of cinema loves what we've done here and things like that. And it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what is this movie? Yeah. I mean, this is it's it's almost like they went, do what we did for Venom but with vampires. But Jared Leto's also I don't think yeah. anyone knows what movie they're in. Like Jared Leto's giving it the whole I'm gonna, you know, do you the Academy the performance, yeah. you know, I'm playing a disabled man. And I'm gonna rise again, and you know, be this intriguing, intriguing. Even just this line delivery is just shit. Yeah, man. Nah. It's just so flat. I mean, the, the performances, the movie, the plot—it's all just flat, and it just amounts to watching nothing. It's like mm. like the equivalent of watching one of those screensavers on your computer. But even then, you have the excitement of it hitting the corner every now and then. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's the bit when he learns to levitate with his sonar oh, but it looks shit <laughs> it, it does look shit it, do you know what it, 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 it's shit it but shit. it's the it's a film that i think i forgot as i was watching it yeah you know like when you're filling up a bucket of water but there's a hole at the bottom like that was that film going into my brain and straight back out yeah it got to because then... i think i saw it on a monday like on my own but like, i literally no, went I... there watched it and i was like well that's done <laughs> Moving on, yeah. went back home. I was it's like, just... I don't actually think I remember much of it, but it's like, <laughs> it I think happened. it's I that think kind it of good. thing, it really is. It's like, yeah, but I can remember bits of it because I was in the cinema waiting for something to happen. So, because I know the comics fairly well, so when he ends up on like a boat and he's just been infected, I was like, oh, this is gonna be like that cool issue of the comic where he like doesn't know what's happening and he ends up killing everybody on the boat. Nope. Not getting any of that. <laughs> Whatever you think about the movie, whether or not we remember it or not, the one thing I took away from it, it had something to do with Spider-Man. I oh, think. that post-credit I made think. it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the only terrible, and then the post-credit was just like, you know, I've, I've already kicked you in the balls, now I'm going to come and stab you in the yeah. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the spun catchphrase, Mike. You should, you should have read that out at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, yeah. I mean, in terms of, like you say, the, the spun post-credit scenes are either like, uh, fuck, now we got to uh, make this film, or like, oh, shit, we're going to hastily link it bad. to the other stuff. <laughs> just bad. My thing about the um, the Venom Let There Be Carnage one, where suddenly they're in the room in the different universe, mm. and, you know, it's that, like... Oh, well, this isn't me. <laughs> and then, oh, that guy. I want to sit on his face. Um, but so that's the lit but, screen. Because we oh, know when we got face. to No Way Home, like, the spell brought people that knew who Spider-Man... As far as we know, there's no Spider-Man in this universe. So how yeah. did that version of Eddie Brock and Venom get, exist. get that's called what through I mean, the multiverse? They kind of see a lot of stuff that you could interpret without actually, like, committing to any of it, because they started seeing stuff in interviews and stuff about, like... Oh, well, um, all the symbiotes are linked because they're like a hive mind. So throughout all the multiverse, they're all linked. So if there's a Venom anywhere who knows Peter Parker and Spider-Man, they all do, which is why he was like licking the screen, recognizing him. And I was like, nothing that's in that scene gives you this indication. No, it's... it looks like he fancies the, that, that teenage yeah, that boy guy. that he's just met. That guy. Yeah. And it's the fact that they use the clip of Tom Holland, which was clearly... <laughs> I think a fucking deleted scene or something. It's like he's... I think it's the start of No Way Home, isn't it? Because it's when he's been like unmasked and they're all like, "Oh, boo! You killed Mysterio." We're it's gonna do this start... for six minutes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know because it. Yeah, because but this came out before. It, well, came, it came out, out before No Way Home. It came out before No Way Home, but then yeah. they, you know, maybe they had access to it. But it looks like a like a deleted scene from the end of Far From Home when they fi they find out that you know Peter Parker's. Peter Parker, Spider Man, because mm -hmm. he's making like confused, but then the street's empty and he's got his mask off for very some reason. Empty. Yeah, very empty. It's almost as if Venom's broken into his room and sniffed his suit while he's wearing it. It's, <laughs> it's quite worrying. But then, how did fucking Adrian Toomes go back the other way? Exactly. <laughs> Well, exactly. How did Adrian Toomes get the end of you know this this mental idea that oh I think it had to do with Spider Man? What makes you say that? Yeah, no yeah. As far as we know, there's no Spider Man in this universe. We I mean, not just that, but he's got no reason to assume that it's got anything to do with Spider Man. As far as we yeah. know, he was in jail in the MCU. A flash of light appeared. He wakes up in jail in a different universe and goes, "Bet it's Spider Man." That I did I thought a few years ago, but nothing has given you that indication, dude. It's that school kid who almost went with my daughter. It's him. He's the one yeah, behind this. The one I have a mutual respect for because he saved yeah. my daughter and my own life. It's definitely fuck him. him. 
but then he gets he manages in somehow we don't have the time frame to cobble together a version of his suit <laughs> in this universe yeah, with sure. very similar technology. Sure. And then you, I mean you saw the trailers, they didn't even know where they were gonna put this scene because it wasn't gonna be a post credit at one point. Because in the trailer they've got scenes where like they visit the jail and it shows you him getting out of jail and everything, and it was gonna be part of the movie. And that's not in the final film. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. And yeah, like because he just appears there, and then it's like, oh, okay, all right. And oh, like yeah. even that whole thing, like from the original trailer at the end, which is like he's in an alleyway, and then we presume the way the trailer's cut, it's the alleyway that has the Spider-Man. Like maybe Adrian Toomes was really good at graffiti and did the Spider-Man murderer mural. That yeah, I think was deleted from the final movie in the end as well. Yeah, that's not in the movie either, but it's in the trailer. Again, which yeah. is just to get people, and that's kind of what I, I, I really resent whenever anybody uses IP to fake getting you into the. It's part of the reason I hate the Joker movies because that's not fucking Joker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're using a name to get people involved so they can go, oh, well, I know this character, and that's kind of what the the, the Spawn films do is just all all I've heard about Venom Three is like, oh, how much of it does connect to this? Does Tom Holland make an appearance? Is there reference to Spider Man? No, they're not interested. But they're not yeah. going to tell you that. So in all the interviews, it's like, oh, you'll have to go and see it. Maybe there's always a chance. Is there balls a chance? <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, why? Why has it always been like, a, oh yeah, like there will be a like a version of Spider Man, if not like yeah. you know Andrew or Toby or whatever. Well, because like it's Andrew's universe Daily Bugle logo in Venom: Let There Be Carnage or whatever, mm-hmm. and the Oscorp logo and things like that, it's like, oh, it's pointing towards it'll be at least something from that universe. Maybe it's revealed that this is the original Amazing Universe and it's gone to shit. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, yeah, well, there will be a Spider-Man eventually. Just You'll have to yeah. wait yeah, for what film he's in. Yeah, keyword eventually. Mm. That's the thing, though. The, the annoying thing is, as much as you, like, you are kind of right in regards to rights, like they're not allowed to solely use Tom Holland because he's being shared with the MCU. But they have the rights to every other Spider-Man, or they can do a different multiverse variant or whatever. There's nothing stopping them putting a Peter Parker in their movie. Cast a yeah. new actor if you have to. I mean, heck, use the live-action Miles Morales. The MCU haven't used them. And just say yeah. this is the yeah. ultimate universe. Yeah, they could yeah. use their own version of anything. I mean, they could pick any of the characters from Spider-Verse as well, really. Yeah, I mean, heck, call it Ben Riley. Say it's the clone or, or any number of the people that have taken over the mantle of Spider-Man in the comics, you know? <clears throat> oh my god, it's Ben Riley. <laughs> oh my god, it's Ben Parker back from the dead. <laughs> it's not something to do with Ben Riley, I think. <laughs> Got something to um, do with Secret Agent Aunt May, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she's in a fucking James Bond like fucking car. Like <laughs> just shagging multiple Ben Parkers. Maybe that <laughs> that's the Aunt May movie. Um Mad Web too. I mean I, I kind of like this one for the similar reasons why I like the Venom films in Like it's it, these are like the superhero equivalent of the room, like it's shit. Yeah, but I mean, like, this one is the most room. Like yeah. I, I would, I would, this is this, roomish. This, this is roomish. Yeah. I would. I don't even get that from Morbius. I don't even think it's so bad. It's good. I think it's just terrible. Oh, it's Huge terrible. But, I, but you can kind of watch it and laugh and be like, "What the fuck no. is this what even is meant this? to be?" Yeah. I can't really. I can with the Matt Smith dance, and that's it. The rest of it is just large <laughs> chunks of incredible boredom. And like you said, it just goes in one ear and out the other and nothing happens and Jared Leto thinks he's, you know, vying for an Oscar because he insisted on staying in his wheelchair the entire time or whatever that we've heard. Yeah. He insisted on actually killing people and drinking their blood. Crave <laughs> <laughs> for plasma. Yeah. Why didn't they just make Matt Smith more loon? Mm. Well, yeah, more than the, the vampire guy. Who knows? Yeah. With the sucker hands. Because then all the dancing with his hands... Is warming up his suckers, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's what he's doing. He's not tempting you, like, come and come and have sex with me, Matt Smith. He's no, just he's clenching his hands to warm up his hands. He's clenching to warm up his hand suckers. Matt Smith craves for plasma. Anyway. Because <laughs> then, then we could see him in that big fucking collar and cloak. Like, that would be <laughs> oh, I would love that. See, that would automatically have given, I'd have given the film an extra star if they'd had the balls to put Jared Leto in that disco huge collar and everything like the comics. And the Cuban Hills. Yeah, exactly. Big flowing fucking wispy 
bits of grey in his hair and that. Yeah, yeah. I do love we'll that, part, that part of the animated, uh, the, the 90s cartoon, is that, like, Morbius is just a regular kind of Eastern European guy who dresses in, like, sweaters and leather jackets. Then he gets infected by that kind of bat and becomes part bat, and then suddenly starts dressing fully like a vampire, like he's said, in, like, huge collars and disco outfits and bare chest, and it's like, what happened? Did the virus affect love, your fashion sense as well? <laughs> I love that kind of stuff, because it's also with, like, the original, like, X-Men films. It's sort of like... Um, it's sort of suggested that whatever Wolverine does with his hair, it automatically goes back to that shape. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. That, that is that kind of, I, I love that kind of just, you know, stupendous shite. But I also love how Punisher has to use a laser gun because bullets are too bad. <laughs> Violence. I can fucking yeah. shoot them off like in Star Wars, but I can't just riddle them with a minigun. The censorship of the 90s cartoons is something that you could... I'm sure there are documentaries about it, but it's always I've always found it fascinating for like reasons, like I said, you're not allowed to say blood, but you can say plasma. And you can't say that the villains are going to kill anybody, but you can have them say they're going to destroy them. And I'm like, you're really <laughs> splitting hairs over the difference yeah. here, aren't you? Destroy. <laughs> destroy. Fucking uh, eradicate. I mean, you're one step away from a fucking Next dictatorship. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, what we'd rate in this um, spun... Spun masterpiece. Two. Two? Yeah. I'd say this is at least a three. Morbius? I think the Matt Smith dance is two points. But yeah, that's two stars. The rest of it, no. What, and then, oh, okay. Maybe half a star for it's got something to do with Spider-Man, we think. And that's Sony desperately clinging onto this audience going, you yeah. think this is got Yeah, yeah, to do with yeah. we're going to link it back to him. We and, the, and the fact that, you know, that clearly was filmed, you know, the two of them weren't there in the room together. No, like it's it's fucking Michael Keaton ADR. It's, do you know what I love as well, Mike? Do you remember the interview? I think it's on Fallon, where Keaton's mm. like, "Yeah, I just did a spy man. Yeah, what did you do? Fuck knows. Don't know." <laughs> That's what I mean, but there was so much. Like I said, because they revealed at that point, there was so much filmed, and half of it isn't even in the film. I, I mean, I wouldn't know if it's on the Blu-ray because I'm never gonna buy it. But yeah, but I you mean... have to for a completionist. God no, I don't want to get Morbius <laughs> or Venom three. I may buy Madam Web one day, but. No, just no. I can't put up with those again. Um, no. Morbius uh, gets half, half a star uh, out of five for me. It can, it can have one out of ten. <laughs> out of more... Well, not Morbius curiosity. Uh, Madam Web, I'm, I'm kind of curious about going back to. But not for the right reasons. I I, like I said, we should do all of the spum in one. The spum in one. Spum in one. When spum becomes one. When two when becomes spum. When two becomes spum. Become spum. Oh, no. <laughs> I'd say it's a three. Like it's it's sh- it's shit, but like I can watch it and laugh, and three also out, no, yeah, there's no consequence. <laughs> hmm. Be like, none of this is ever going to make sense or happen, or you know, be relevant to any film or thing or TV series ever again. I'd give it one star if I could watch it and then feel sad about it because I don't feel sad about it. It's a two. Yeah. See, like, the thing is, to... I'm, I'm assuming that you two don't particularly like the character of Morbius in the comics and stuff. And I, I think do... Morbius is fine. I've not been megally exposed to... He's not been exposed to Matt Smith, which is quite oh, good. Matt... No, no, no. But it's Morbius is one like Venom where he's had solo series apart from yeah. the I'm an evil vampire and I'm going to eat everyone. Like, is that more than just the Morbius character or is that just the character? I mean, his solo stuff tends not to be very good. But I'm talking about, like, when he appears in the Spider-Man comics, I quite like him as a character because... It's a bit out there and a bit weird, and like mm. kind of like how the Venom symbiote is like an alien. It's kind of it's nice that Spider Man, in the comics at least, Spider Man when this weird shit happens, it's supposed to be unusual, which is why I've kind of I was having a conversation with somebody where I said I think part of why the MCU m- mucked up was having Spider Man's second mission be now go to space and fight the giant purple alien with the magic stones because now nothing that Spider Man does is going to seem like whoa, this is so weird. going to weird him out. Yeah, he's going to be like, well, that's just everyday stuff. Vampires, plasma suckers, yeah, that's just, you know, that's three addies down the street from me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, I'm with you with that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But like, then, like, again, like, Morbius works with Spider-Man. This is like, well, that character that Spider-Man. you like in the Spider-Man comics, let's have him without that. You well, know. not even just Spider-Man, he works, I think he actually probably works better when Marvel realised like he he pairs really well with Blade because they're both kind yeah. of vampires but not kind of thing. I mean, but then unfortunately, Blade is never going to happen again ever again. Yeah. So and not in the Sony universe. Exactly. Yeah, that's the problem. Is that Blade is MCU, 
and obviously Morbius would never be. So again, that's part of the reason why I was like, well, that's so annoying. <laughs> I mean, you'd say it would never be, but then there's always been that stuff, you know, when Amy Pascal would say the stuff that Kevin Feige knew nothing about, like, you know, maybe one day this, you know, yeah, like, just they never it. counteract, like, they never yeah. contradicted the MCU in terms of the fact of this could be happening on the, like, the West Coast or whatever. Like, it yeah. could, you know, it just, it could be happening the other side and we won't contradict it because maybe one day it'll sort of link in with the Fingers hopes crossed. that, yeah. you know, we want Kevin Feige to help, but we don't want to give him total control because then he might actually make a good film. We like, can't have that. Yeah, we can't yeah. Have that. but I think that's maybe part of the reason. <laughs> like you know, they might when they renegotiate for the next one, it might just be a thing of why don't you just let us? You know, you can have all the money for these characters, but just let us write them. You know, semi fucking okay. Like it's I can't them doing that. To be honest, I think Sony would be reluctant to do that because they they don't want to give up even the off chance. And I mean, as much as me, we hate that the movies like the first Venom at least made like a billion. So they're making yeah, money. Yeah, but eight million or something million, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. It was, it was, also, that's just about the fact that I think ninety percent of that is it's Tom Hardy as Venom. Yeah, it's not people. Not, it's that guy. It's not the majority of them being like us, being like, but where's the origin? Like, where did you come down with where's the media? Where, when he latches onto the suit and the emo kid? Yeah, yeah. it's just it's yeah. I, I can't see it happening because, like I said, Sony, I think want to try and make their own money. I mean, the very fact that they're making these films, like they, they renegotiated the rights to Spider Man and then were just like, but we've got all the other characters, ha ha ha, we can still use that, which would a stupid idea to start with, let alone base an entire universe around. It's a disgusting and, idea because you're baking a universe around the character that you don't fucking have. But also, <laughs> do you think it's true that, like, if Sony make the um, character, then Marvel can't use it? Do you yes, think, think it's credence to that? Yeah. Well, I think they own the rights to any of the Spider-Man characters, so it's kind of an agreement. I mean, I don't know the specifics, and I'm not going to look it up, but it's something along the lines of, like, the, if they appear in a Marvel, in an MCU film or not, it's technically still Sony's property if they're a Spider-Man character, hence why you can have the Vulture turn up in Morbius and be like, oh, I'm here. Can you remember me? Because he's not an MCU character. He's technically a Sony character. Um, Which is why they've been very careful around, like, um, MJ. It's their version, like, it's mm. Marvel's MJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michelle yeah. Jones and not yeah. Mary Jane. Yeah. Exactly. So they, but, I mean, yeah. Sony couldn't just have, like, Tony Stark Iron Man turn up, for example, and be like, well, he was in a Spider-Man movie, because, like, that's not their character, if you know what I mean. Oh, look, it's Tim Stank. <laughs> I mean, they could, but they'd have to pay Robert Downey Jr. a hell of a lot of money. Well, no, that, that, I mean, rights-wise, the MCU aren't going to let that happen. Because so that's basically what they were paying. The agreement was, like, to, to make our Spider-Man films successful, we're making them and we're basically leasing out like Iron Man, Doctor Strange, Nick Fury, whoever else to appear in our movie. But it's still a Sony Spider-Man movie. So we own everything around it, except whichever characters and sort of locations of yours already exist. <laughs> yeah, it is a load of shit. And I do wish, you know, some of these characters would have been done in the MCU films. A million uh, percent. Just, a million percent. I mean, because I think, I mean, I don't know if, you agree, Mike, that the, the original sort of rumblings around uh, No Way Home when it was there was going to be Craven hunting down Spider-Man now that he knew his identity sort of stuff mm. and that John Watts and Tom Holland had spoken about having him in there and now we're just going to have... Our... And it's also weird that like we've got loads of MCU fucking alumni just in it. Like, <laughs> That's what I mean! In Venom, Jimmy Taylor, Jimmy Taylor, Jimmy. Aaron Taylor Johnson, Reese Iphons. Yeah. Chua Talegi for who currently is still Mordor? In the MCU, because oh, yeah. yeah. technically Mordo didn't die in our universe that we saw. He yeah, was going to too many symbiotes. I mean, that's just. I mean, that's a whole thing. We could we should do an episode where it's post credit scenes that never came to fruition, and we'd have fucking most of from the MCU. Yeah, um, yeah. But we must now talk about the masterpiece that is Madam Web. Madam Web, the female Spider Woman we didn't know we wanted. I still like yeah. this movie. I'm going to die on this hill. I know. <laughs> Go for it. I enjoyed it as an as a kind of mindless action movie with slight vague ties to characters that I know and love. It's fine. I mean, yes, there's things you can laugh at, but again, it's kind of to me, unlike Morbius, like I said, but like the Venom films, when it does things that are ridiculous, it's so laughable that you have to just be like, I'm gonna pretend it was intentional that you dropped a giant Pepsi sign on your bad guy because you know, product placement. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> No, I'm, yeah, I'm morbidly curious about Madden Web, but like you, Mike, I remember enjoying it partly, some part of it was genuine, but I don't exactly, I can't pinpoint as to why I enjoyed it. But out of these five, 
I don't look at this one and think, oh no, not Madam Web. I, 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 I kind of accept it. However, there's still some glaring issues with it that oh, yeah. is baffling, oh, yeah. really. But yeah. What would you say the What would you say the worst thing about this, this movie, movie is? About Madam Web, the worst thing about Madam Web. The worst um, thing about Madam Web is that it should have just leaned into being about Madam Web training the Spider Women instead of teasing that at the end for a movie that probably exactly. now won't ever happen. <laughs> yeah, it's just about yeah, like Spider Women assemble. It's yeah. all out of order, and mm. the guy that's coming to kill them because they oh, will become that Spider guy. People. That guy. Yeah, I mean the, I mean the. They assemble a capable cast, right. but they just don't actually really let them do anything. It's almost like waiting for a train, the movie. It's like, you know, <laughs> oh. yeah, like the, the real good stuff's at the end, but that will be in the next one. I have remembered my one, my one worst scene in the movie, and it's not, not something I can even hand wave away as being like intentionally hilarious because it's just stupid. And it's where um, Madame Webb leaves the four girls in her apartment and just says, you guys hang out here, I'll be back in a while, and then like flies to Peru. <laughs> yeah, she's like goes yeah, to the yeah. Amazon and back in like yeah. a day. I'm like, come on, man. Amazon Prime Express flight. I'll be back in a day. <laughs> yeah. What well, if you had to describe what was describe. going on to someone that had never seen Madam Web, Connor? Um, three young girls oh, are in the safe. Yeah, no, the emphasis the young bit. <laughs> um, yeah, they're in the care of a stranger that they meet. Into from a scary, stalky, rich looking predatory man oh, that's after them. It's it's yeah, but that's life. Life's all about scary. But guess what, people? We've got webs, and together we are mad and web, and we can beat sexism and males. <laughs> da, 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 da. That's the movie, but with a bunch of schoolgirls because don't worry, the superhero so will come in the next movie. That, yeah, you know, that's number two. What I was describing was number one. Oddly, like that is. Essentially, what it is. Please, it's, it's really not. Girl girl that than that. At least the they Cover have Johnson. Girl. At least they have Cassie using her powers of like precognition and stuff, you know. And yeah, yeah. There's, there's good action stuff, weird, you know. There's there's good action stuff. It's just that I feel like what we got is the first half of of a movie where they didn't bother making the second half because they thought we'll just stretch it out and make a second movie. It felt like we're watching a very long demo. Mm. If this yeah. is like so fucking 2009, like it looks like shit as well. It really doesn't. Compared to Mobius, it looks like fucking Shaft. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a con- the movie's concept art. The movie. All of it's concept. I just, yeah, I don't get... Morbius looks like shit because everything's washed out and in blue neon friggin' ultraviolet yeah, light and stuff. Madam yeah. Web looks fine. It looks like a 90s action film. <laughs> but it's 2000 and. 22 at this point, right? <laughs> We've seen a lot. It looks no worse than if you were to chuck on your copy of like Con Air or something. You know, it's like, oh well. Don't you dare diss Nicolas Cage on this podcast, Mike. <laughs> so here for him is no Nicolas Cage, god damn it. To hear his... I completely forgot his name, yeah. Yeah, to hear him. Ezekiel, Mr. Ezekiel, Mr. Conair himself. Oh, I don't know the actor's name, but I know Ezekiel. Mr. Mr. Conair himself. <laughs> he searched for us. Because if like, do I remember the start of this film? It's uh, do you want to remember the start of this film? Madam Web's mum gets bitten by a spider, or no, her m- well, was sexually no. assaulted by a spider. <laughs> no, her, his, her mum was. <laughs> can you not remember the the line they all made fun of in the trailer, which isn't even in the movie, and like even the Oscars made fun of it. It's like my mom disappeared when she was researching spiders in the Amazon, and that man yeah. was there with her, and <laughs> kind of that's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> okay. It's been so long. I, I literally, I've, I've watched this film once. That part of the film is the really yeah. crap part because, like, it doesn't really. It's not part of the comics origin or anything, and it's just kind of quick. We'll better give her an origin story rather than being all mystical. So it's like there's this magic spider that exists in the Amazon that you know it gives this entire tribe of people who look remarkably like Spider Man the power to do everything Spider Man can do, and Ezekiel wants that power for himself, but then he shoots to shoots and kills. Uh, Madam Web's mum, but she's pregnant with Madam Web, so before she dies, she gives birth to her, but she's now been bitten by that spider, so she kind of has these, you know, precognitive powers because she's got slight powers from the spider. And yeah, it's all it's all bullshit. It's just comic book origin shit, really, you know. Yeah, it is. I mean, I still, I'm, you know, will I own all of these at some point? Probably. 
Maybe. I will own Madam Web at some point. Like I said, I enjoyed it well enough. And be- being a huge fan of like the Spider-Man characters, mm. yes, I know that it's it's pathetic and I'm a sucker, but I just was like, Uncle Ben, oh, Spider-Man. Yeah, but I mean, even like, <laughs> that's pointless though. Like the whole Uncle Ben, ben stuff. Ben's an uncle. He's just useless Ben. And it's like, hey, look, there's a baby being born. <laughs> but I, I get a thrill out of it because I know it's Spider-Man. <laughs> Yeah, we're never going to see this fight. I mean, he's not even Spider Baby. He ain't even. Born. I don't have to see him in a future movie. I just know who he is. <laughs> I but like you him. say, this is the closest we get to a, a, a version of Spider Man being in the Spum films. Yeah. And what we had in this movie was Man Spider. I like Spider-Man. that. I mean, at least at least they're embracing those characters, though. I mean, even if they didn't have, you know, Mary being pregnant, I would be chuffed to bits of seeing like Ben and and uh, Mary Parker. And being like, oh, I know those guys. At least you're leaning into the fact that it's meant to be a Spider-Man universe, rather than ignoring yeah. it completely. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Prior to this movie, it, yeah, let's have a movie about Spider-Man, but we can't have a minute. At least they kind of skirt around it and incorporate enough of, like you say, the they're vague enough that it could be any version of. You Spider-Man. can look at this blind and go, oh wait, Parker, I know that's Spider-Man. You watch any of the other three movies before this, you go, well, where's Spider-Man? What's Spider-Man got to do with this? It's a exactly. baby to do with Spider-Man, I think. It's a baby to do with Spider-Man, I think, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I kind of like the stuff in the comics as well about, like, some people hate this, but the idea of, like, the, the spider being destiny and Spider-Man, it wasn't just a random accident. There's always been these kinds of people. And so I like the kind of the mythology the film created for itself, where it's like, no, there are these people that are basically like proto-Spider-Mans. They've got, like, a black version of the costume that looks a bit stringy, but they can mm. swing around and climb trees like walls and stuff. And it's like, all right. So there's, like... And like I said, that's kind of how Ezekiel and Morlin work in the comics anyway, is that, like, there are spider people throughout the multiverse, and I have to kind of find them and get their power. And I can dig that. What the heck? Why not? <laughs> you know? Because um, you have to find us somewhere where the spider women are going to get their powers, since we never learn that either. <laughs> so, you know? That's true. Do you think we'll ever get a second one? No. Like I said, I think it was always going to fail anyway because we're in a timeline where as soon as a female-led project comes out, everyone goes, yeah, walk, uh, what are you doing? So I think even if it had been like a fantastic movie, it would have bombed financially and they wouldn't have made another one because the usual suspects would have all went, oh, we'd been walk for in the same way that the Marvels bombed, even though it's a perfectly good movie. I mean, it's yeah, not the best MCU that came film. During the strike as well. Yeah, it's yeah. not the best MCU film, but it is absolutely not the. Oh, this is the most garbage thing I've ever seen. That the friggin' conservative people want you to think because, oh God forbid, it's three women in the lead role. You know, mm-hmm. where's all the white men gone? Uh, they're in plenty of other fucking films. Exactly. Um, I think we should all talk about like the best part of this movie is Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> I love that character, although I don't know why they changed her name. She's Julia Carpenter in the comics, who becomes Spider Woman, who, by the way, is where the black costume comes from that would eventually become Venom. Um, but yeah, they call her Julia Cornwall in this film for reasons that I have no idea why. They wanted to promote the town of Cornwall. Maybe yeah. they, 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 that producer did it as an inside joke. Shout out to Cornwall. Yeah, they had a deal for pasties. <laughs> exactly, maybe. <laughs> He shoots Spider-Man pasties at the at the villains in the Spider pasties in, in the in the in the sequel that we're never going to get. Yeah. yeah, I have to say, Julia Carpenter, Spider Woman is my shit. The other two I kind of vaguely know of, but they're they're past my time. They're the more modern ones because one of them's like Aranya, I think, and one of them's Silk, and then they became Spider Woman or whatever. A, a different different versions of it, but yeah, the Julia Carpenter Spider Woman is the one that I know and love from the comics, the nineties cartoons, and everything. <laughs> And to have her played by Sydney Sweeney was was a nice bonus. <laughs> yes, yeah, bonus. Oh, can't complain. Boner. <laughs> um, what would we rate this one? I I solid. I give it a solid three out of five. So I would say what was that? Six out of ten. Roughly the same as the first Venom film. Maybe I I might go a bit higher if I rewatch it. Because to be honest, I can see myself going three and a half or seven. <laughs> it's it's a perfectly fine movie, and I enjoy it for what it is. I second Mike, kind of a TBC for me because I need to re-watch it again. And the thing is, I want to. There's a small part of me that wants to, whether it's for boner reasons or not. Um, <laughs> but no, I'm like, Matt, it's a fairly adequate I like movie. the action the scenes. Can you not remember the cool scene where she breaks the... She, like, busts the ambulance through a neon billboard and stuff? It's, like, it's cool, man. <laughs> See, that's the only thing I don't remember. But for that score, you're going to make me go higher. I'm going to go seven and a half. Wow, okay. <laughs> seven, seven and a half. Say five. It's 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 you know it 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 does a movie it does a movie thing. So it looks like we're on to the 
the spoiler heavy section. Oh. I mean, everyone's probably seen Venom by now. Venom. Venom, Venom, Venom. That's the thing as well. It should have been like James Bond. They should have had someone else do the Venom theme for every film. <laughs> Venom. Venom. I was watching um, the uh, Screen Junkies review of this film, and they, the, at the end, the thing they did for like humor was that they all did their own like fan fiction of like what could this cross over with to make it make more money and be more popular and one of them was saying that um as it's sony and marvel sony and marvel also have men in black so you could cross it over with that and then someone was like yes have agents j and k like turn up to be the people that got that little bit of goo symbiote and be like we'll handle it from here and then you could have will smith do the venom song at the end like a will smith rap I'm like, I want this movie now. <laughs> Here comes the Venom back. Du, du. He's from another universe. His spider suit is black. <laughs> <laughs> He's chocolate and tater tots. He's gonna eat your brains. <laughs> Unless you're a Chinese lady. Like you. <laughs> like you. <laughs> So I've not managed to see this yet, mainly because I've uh, there's been a sick child that I haven't been able to abandon. Uh, um, I didn't realise that when I ruined it for you with like a three hour conversation after I'd seen it. No, but that's cool because it's also it's a spum film, so you can't you can't hate on you know being spoiled on the spum because I was kind of I was very interested to gauge your opinion and Connor's, so it'll be interesting to see what, if you two agree on anything with this, or you might. Both universally love it. Love it. Yeah, it's the best one. Mm. Woo! Yeah, last dance, baby. Yeah. So what? What is? What is the point of last dance? Well, it's in the name. This is supposed to be the last. Oh shit! We have got Craven next month. Fuck. Um, have you have you seen the film Man of Steel? <laughs> <laughs> yes. But now yes, have you never seen the Man of Dance? <laughs> Do you know how the whole plot about like Superman has like the genetic codex to save the species, and if Superman dies, the Krypton's it's it's basically that. <laughs> if his venom is from Krypton or Ven Ven Tom Ven Tom Ven 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 Tom Ven Tom. Yeah. What's so uh, Ven Venom me? What, last ven answer. Venom me. me. Come on, what's? All right, so it begins with a bit of a salsa, then they do a bit of a tango, then he meets Mrs. Chang in Las Vegas, and they do every single dance in one. And that's, out of the whole trilogy, that scene, whether you're a critic or you're a fanboy or you're, you know, you're Idiot. a fucking heathen that loves this universe, that will be your ride or die. That will be your best, worst, hateful, questionable moment. I didn't know how to feel with that whole dance sequence. I still I'll, tell you, I'll tell you how I felt about it. I felt like, yeah. don't, first of all, I'm, I'm going to go into full rant mode here. First of yeah. all, we all come to these movies to see Venom as in the character that we know as he appears in the comics and stuff. So I'll yes. tell you what the wisest thing you can do is make it a plot point that we can't see him because then it would be too dangerous and you'd get tracked. So, yeah. you know, literally just handicapped yourself immediately by going, we cannot fully merge. I can pop out of your back and talk to you and stuff, but we can't go full Venom. But yes, let's go have hand. a boogie. My venom is Jordy, just because you know why not. <laughs> yeah. so it was already stupid to do that, but then to be like, we can't merge because these xenophage creatures will spot us immediately. They'll hunt us down, kill us, and then Noel will be free and destroy the universe. So under no circumstances can we possibly merge. It would have to be like the end of the universe level catastrophe. Eddie, I want to dance to Abba with Mrs. Chen. Fuck the consequences. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. The, the, that just whole sequence standed out for me, and I still question myself whether I enjoyed it or not. It I would be know. fine if they hadn't spent the entire half hour beforehand going, yeah, yeah, I cannot emphasize enough, we yeah. cannot merge. It yeah, is universe know. destroying bad. No, I want to dance, let's do it. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we know what a mess of the movies we are. Let's just have a boogie. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go out with a bit of a swing. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that sequence stands out. Um, no, Stephen Ash, you know what? Rant point number two. Fucking no justice for Stephen Graham, like we alluded to earlier. No justice for Toxin, more importantly. I can't <laughs> believe we have a fucking... They set up... One of the things I kind of was a little bit excited about with regards to Let There Be Carnage, like, I love Toxin in the comics, and I was like, oh, they're going to do Toxin because the Toxin symbiote's connected to Stephen Graham. And what happens is they wheel him in and say, oh, off screen, the toxin symbiote abandoned him. So now we're going to attach him to the fucking Lasher symbiote or something. And it's like, what are you doing? This has nothing to do with anything. Oh, 
pissed me off so much that he didn't even get phage. I, this, they're all in there. I mean, you you'd have to be a really hardcore like fan of them to be able to point and be like, oh, I think I know who that one is. Like, I, I think I recognised Anti Venom because one of them's bright white, and that's like, yes, that maybe is supposed to be him, I guess. Yeah. And I've heard from other people that like the big grey one with the whole cans is something from the comics, and one of them which has like weird dreadlock things is is something from the comics. But oh. Juno Temple's one isn't a comic character. It's just, it seems to be that they, they want to make her into like a new kind of hero that they're trying to do. So again, to emphasize how great the plot of this movie is, Juno Temple plays a woman whose brother wanted to be a NASA scientist, not an astronaut, mind you, because that would be exciting. He wanted to be the guy in the chair at Mission Control. Um, and they were skipping on the beach one day when lightning randomly struck them, killed her brother and burned half of her like arm, right down her arm, which... Yeah. Would be terrible, except if, upon merging with a symbiote, she then gets lightning powers and can she you know, run, run like the Flash and become yeah, electrically charged and stuff. And it's just like, yeah. what are we doing here? What is this? What is this movie? <laughs> I mean, would you have had more respect if the, the, the fucking symbiote had brought her brother back from the dead and made him the Flash? Uh, no, <laughs> frankly. But yeah, I mean, th the thing is, even people that like this film, like I said, I watched the Screen Junkies review and even they're like, this character, this Juno Temple character is nothing. You can't just pick one particular thing and think it makes a character. And literally all she does is spend the whole movie complaining about missing her dead brother. That's not yeah. a character. That's just... Exactly, exactly that, yeah. Um, look, looking online, the symbiote is Agony. Oh, okay. the many, many symbiotes, Agony. Was it Agony watching this film? Yeah. No, for me, I don't think it was. For me, anyway. <laughs> no, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever... It, it was for a while. I, mean, I, think I, wrote in, I wrote in my letterbox review, it kind of redeemed itself in that the last act gets to be a little yeah. bit kind of like... Like the others, there's brainless action enough that I can be like, all right, I can disengage my brain and think, look at some monsters beat each other up and... Probably best not to question why there's a giant open air acid dumping tank because that's a health and safety freaking nightmare for a start. You know? But yeah, <laughs> gotta kill the symbiote somehow. Spoiler alert. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it is Area 51. God knows there's nothing safe over there anyway. But this is Area 51, but they're shutting it down. Oh, oh. After, the the after the covenant, it's it swallowed oh. everything up. No, but it's just like Area 50. Well, I don't know what number it is. Area 55 underneath, which is where Juno Temple... Yeah, there's is. an underground <laughs> version that they're not closing, but they're closing... Area 55, I swear it's called that. It might not be called 55, but I have that in my head. Something like that, yeah. yeah. I tell you what confused me, but this might have just been that I wasn't particularly paying attention during the action sequence, is that, again, heavy spoilers, sorry, everybody, if you haven't seen it, but, like, the symbiote decides it's going to kill itself by, like, going between those two kind of towers and pouring the acid down on itself so that it just melts mm. away. Um, and Eddie's like lying on the floor where the huge like overflow sea of acid would eventually get to him. But the symbiote yeah. gives him like a broken off door and pops it on top of him. And this somehow protects him from <laughs> liquid acid. And acid <laughs> rain, yeah, acid what? rain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go to either side of you, dude. It's, it, what, what, what? What about your tootsies? What about your shoes? <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, no, this is this is the pitch. This is the pitch, and Sony fucking agreed to this job. Is Tom Hardy any love, good at this? Love. Hmm? Is Tom Hardy any good at this? I I would say no, because he no. It's like, like I said, it's like he's, he believes his own hype way too much in this one. So he he sort of thinks he's making like this generation's bad boys or some kind of great buddy cop film oh instead God. of like in the first two. It seems like he realized like I'm just having a laugh and being a bit of a daft bugger and then in this one he it's so somber and serious and like yeah. oh me and you forever oh i wish i could have a family venom symbiote where if only you were a woman and i could fuck you i would be much better. <laughs> oh, you won't. i don't remember that in this movie <laughs> it's what basically the, the entire subtext when he's in the van with lisa fans and he's like wish i could have a family like this symbiote oh i know eddie i love you but we can't do that you know <laughs> 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 yeah, it's just the way that phrase is a bit sus, but no, he's, he's, you're not wrong. Yeah, no, those themes get brought up. Yeah, Venom wants a family. They, they like Tom Hardy and Venom, aka himself, goof around about how much like Venom actually admits that he loves Eddie Brock, and Venom's like, no, no, I didn't say that. 
but they kind of <laughs> there's feelings of yeah like love Venom would like a family, not necessarily with himself. He don't want to fuck himself, as far as I'm aware. I didn't get those vibes. But then um, he must have fucked himself to give birth to Carnage. Oh, no. That's in the well, comics, not in the I mean, I, I'm, I'm exaggerating. They don't kind of make it imply yeah. that way. But it's just the fact that, like I said, they think they're making some dead serious drama. So I mentioned yeah, this yeah, in the, right, in the discussion bad with you. With it's bad yeah. boys with Alien, yeah. That's what they're going for. I, even in the discussion I had with you on Discord, George, where I was like, they genuinely, and I'm not exaggerating here, pause the film for three minutes so that the hippie van family led by Risa fans can have a sing-along of a really poor karaoke version of Space Oddity by David Bowie with yeah. the Venom symbiote then joining in, trying to sound like it's a really melancholy, sad, like dramatic performance. ponderous, dramatic moment, like they're going for the Oscar, and I'm just... Honestly, there were so many times where I was just like, what am I watching? What is this film? <laughs> mm. Nah, he's not wrong. Yeah, he's not wrong. I'm, I'm blown away. I really am. Um, <laughs> is there going to be more I'm of watching. these? I kind of have to. Uh, I kind of have to share this with you first, as if it wasn't insulting enough that they're trying to make out that you know our symbiotes are all good, really, and Venom and Brock are totally in love, and that it's all about their you know their last stand together and the heroic sacrifice the symbiote makes. They genuinely do the Fast and Furious montage ending, where Eddie yeah. finally goes to New York and sees the Statue of Liberty that the symbiote said it always wanted to see, and it does the montage of like all of the past adventures they had oh, in the previous two too, yeah. movies. Like, as if they're waving off Paul Walker in Fast and Furious 7. It's just like, <sighs> guys, it's not that deep. You did not make some dead serious dramatic movie. It's a dude and some black goo. <laughs> it's some dude and black goo that wants that wanted to fuck himself and have family? Question mark. Yeah. Um Yeah. That, yeah, the ending aside, yeah. The third act incredible. That last montage, yeah, very questionable, very not hard not to laugh. Just um, Tom Hardy in, in the most earnest solemnness looking at the Statue of Liberty going. We finally made it, buddy. With like a tear in his eye, I'm like, "What? <laughs> oh yeah, I bet you're good to lose the fucking gooey black alien that kept eating people." <laughs> no, um, no, um, but in regards to your question, George, about future, aka, is there going to be more? The Ven Venom, not just to disclose the spoilers, Venom is definitely gone. Tom well, Hardy's I, definitely done. I, I would I would counter that and tell you that he's clearly not though, because they have that scene where he goes to the MCU and flashes back, which again I want to criticize that as well. But then they yes. capture yes. they capture the little bit of kind of goo that came off him, and that's still there as far as we know. And then at the end of the movie, at the very kind of post credit scene that's kind of half comedy, you see the there's like black goo attached to a cockroach after they've already said like cockroaches are one thing that can survive even like nuclear holocaust and whatever. So I think it's kind of it, it blatantly seems to be hinting, yeah, the symbiote can still be around. It's just spawned from a little bit of goo that came off it or something. So I'm not convinced that the venom symbiote is actually dead. And the fact that Hardy flip flops between this is my last one and I'll come back anytime they ask me. But, but exactly. Yeah. Is it the same Mike? Is it the same goo? Or is it a different venom? Will we get actual? I'm gonna fuck that. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck. Venom. I'm gonna fuck Spider Man then. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a different film. Who right, knows? Because this is gonna be the same goofy. Oh. Eddie, I love you. Oh, I would have Well, it will depend on, on where they turn up. If they turn up in Secret Wars, they might be better. If they turn up in another Sony movie, let's be honest, it'll be crap. But no, yeah. um, to uh, to my other point, though, I kind of, again, sorry if I'm just hijacking, but I kind of have to That's say right. Right. what they kind of do with the post credit scene in No Way Home is unforgivably bad. And I didn't even realise they were doing this because I picked up on the fact that, like, they immediately, they do that scene where he's, like, with Cristo Fernandez from Ted Lasso, and it's like, oh, tell me about this purple alien that wants stones. Because aliens don't want stones. They want to eat brains, blah, blah, That exact scene as it plays out. Then they flash back to the same bar, but it's in the Sony universe. And the symbiote's just like, well, I like our universe better. This multiverse shit, I'm so over it. And I'm like, first of all, how fucking dare you? And then it shows me the scene from the end of that post credits in No Way Home where the little bit of goo comes off and then gets caught in a jar by the bad guys. And I'm like... I hadn't realized, but other people have said since, yes, that's them trying to undo it. 
like they're saying he flashed back to his own universe before that goo came loose. So it's not actually loose in the MCU. And don't worry about it. We've just caught it in a little jar anyway. So it's fine. And I'm like, then what was the point of any of that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. I'm pretty sure Sony would have left, would have, would have been the ones to be like, and then leave a bit of venom in the MCU universe, huh? Huh? Instead of like Marvel trying to fucking hijack it, like they're trying to steal it from under them. Yeah. Mm. But no, I mean, it's, I think it might have been Mr. Sunday Movies' review where he was like, I've never seen a franchise which dips its toe in and out of wanting to connect to the MCU so many freaking times and just doesn't do it, just will not commit. It's like, oh, we might, we might, oh, Toffee Daff, we're not. <laughs> it's so freaking yeah. annoying. It's a, it just seems to me like an internal fucking board meeting power struggle. You get one nice guy who's on the fan side. He's like, no, we are going to do it. And then they'll see the final product release and then they'll get to the next day or whatever. And then the, the evil executive corporate bastard will get into the room and be like, no, you will undo it now or I'll fire all your jobs. And yeah, it, it seems like internal studio power struggle. Between it's so stupid though, because even, I mean, even aside from your point, George, of like how come it affected Eddie Brock because he doesn't know who Spider-Man is. Outside mm -hmm. of even that, now the entire trip was pointless. It means that Venom got pulled into the MCU, had a chat with a bartender for a while, got pulled back, shed a little bit of goo, and then went, well, I've had enough of this adventure, and just went off and did something else. So what was the point? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, I've not seen it yet, so I, I can't... Do you want to see it? Oh, uh, yeah. After because, that, you after know, review, you got to finish the trilogy, you know what I mean? But, it seems um... like it's basically the equivalent of, like... Again, I was listening to a different review, so I can't take credit for this, but somebody said, like, it's how it's the way that No Way Home was set up to be, like, everybody knows Spider-Man's identity, we're going to have to deal with this, and then it does for about seven minutes, and then goes, don't worry, Matt Murdock uh, got him out of this, here's some multiverse bad guys, and it's kind of like, it's almost like that, it's like they hinted, ooh, I've been to another universe, now I'm back, and forget about it, quickly, hastily undo, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, all right, <laughs> well, that was pointless, so, yeah. Not the best, really. Would you recommend a... to anyone to actually see it, or would you say just, you know, let the spum die? I, this is the first time, because like I've, I'm always kind of optimistic, and I'm like, you know, there's bits of some of the movies that I like, even though I hated Morbius, like the others, I was like, there's potential, like, you can, you know, keep going, we, we can do something. This is the first time after this that I was like, so when you just let it die, you clearly don't have a frigging clue what you're doing, and just no, <laughs> just no. <laughs> We've we've had enough now, or at least I have. It's kind of like no. I, again, there's probably, like I said, on a nerdy level, if you're a huge fan of like the '90s comics, you might get a thrill out of being able to point and go, "That's Riot, that's Agony, that's Lasher, that's Fate." I don't know who yeah. any of these fuckers are. So, yeah. In in all those symbiotes as well, you have what I would say is Ultimate Carnage from the Ultimate Spider-Man 2005 video game, and he's the one that doesn't say any fucking line and gets eaten first, and that pissed me off. There's the cool two-headed one as well that apparently does exist in the comics. So I'm told. Yes, I've seen an image of that. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> name or anything, but yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to keep remembering things that I want to criticize. But talking about like you can't just give a character one thing and have it be like as if they have a character. There's a character in this, uh, one of the scientists, possibly mm. the best. Like she's a better character than Juno Temple, which is not saying much. And it's just because the actress is more likable. But her entire shtick is that she's wearing like a Christmas wreath brooch and everyone's mocking her for it and calling her like, oh, what are you doing this for Christmas? Oh. And it's because like, she's like, my mother gave it to me before she died or whatever and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, this is, first of all, this is not a character. This is just a weird quirk. And then upon uh, checking the character kind of from the comics or the, the Wikipedia article, discovered that her name is actually Dr. Christmas. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like, well, get the fuck out of here. So no. coincidentally, somebody who's actually called like, you know, Mrs. Mary Christmas or whatever, just happens to develop an obsession with a Christmas-themed brooch. <laughs> like, wow. movie, what are you doing? <laughs> just get out of here. As if it's not bad enough that Juno Temple's character who's scarred is called Dr. Payne. <laughs> no, well, um, I did not know that. Dr. Christmas wasn't just a gimmick. Nope. <laughs> oh, That's a joke. Ugh. Damn it. I oh. thought Christmas only come once a year. I was going to say it would be the equivalent of like if Denise Richards spent the entirety of that Bond film walking around with a Santa hat on. 
<laughs> and nothing else. Uh, George. Oh dear, oh dear. Um, oh, I can't I'm... rate this one because I've not yet seen it. So what what are we giving the Venom Save the Last Dance for me? I think I went one and a half, uh, which would be like a three out of ten, purely because the last act, you know, woke me up a little bit and was entertaining on a mindless, like, well, at least the effects look good kind of level. And to give them credit where it's due, the, the xenophages, even though they're a really stupid idea, they're very well rendered. It's a very well done effect. And uh, yeah. yeah, there's something really cool about the fact that their their mouths are like blenders. So it, it's clearly just like for the shtick of it. But like when they're killing symbiotes or people or whatever else, instead of like eating them, they just put, put them through their mouth. And then it kind of just makes like this weird churning sound and blood spits out the back of their head. So yeah, it's it's like a blender. Yeah, it's like a smoothie blender. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. scores. I'm going to say an eight point five. What? <laughs> and that's how much this Sony universe has affected me. <laughs> I don't know all the wrong reasons yet. You I just agreed with it. every criticism I had, and then you gave it an eight point five. What? I mean, I'm in, I'm from the spam universe. What can I say? It's oh, got something is, to do with any oh, scout. I think you're spam Connor. I am Spam. You're Spam Connor. Uh, you're, spam you're the Connor. Spam version of Connor. I'm Spam them. I'm Spam them. I'm Spam. 8.5? I haven't even given half of the MCU films an 8.5. Well, this was your genuine score. <laughs> what, what is my genuine? I don't even know at this point. I could what be a genuine score. I, 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 really I think like I have a tally of what I've scored so far. I think Connor's had a mental breakdown. Yeah, this is not. Um, I, I, I mean, you gave, you gave a seven and a half to Madam Web. Oh. Yeah, like we all gave we all gave Morbius a four. I thought it was Venom two. We all gave oh, one of the films a four. four. Yeah, yeah. And then the, I you didn't gave give Morbius a four. I gave it like a one. <laughs> or a two, I like. gave Morbius two. You gave Morbius a two because yeah, that was chance. Yeah, yeah. We all gave shit. Venom Let There Be Carnage a four. Yeah. And then you gave Venom one like a six. Venom one like a six or a five or a four. I think a six. I don't yeah. think I've ever said anything is a five. And then what, Madam Web? Did I say seven or seven point five? Seven and a half. I said yeah. Uh, maybe I'll give Venom three slash two uh, <laughs> slash one slash fuck all. <laughs> yeah, it ain't Venom two level. This is like a mix of Venom three and one for me. Um, five and a half. It's middle at the minute. Come on, Michael. What? What, what are you giving it? I already told you I give it um, what would it be the equivalent of three out of ten. Give it one and a half three, stars. Three out of ten. But yeah. The majority of that was for the third act, just because, like, you know, kind of fun. Mm. Monster are fast. you happy we got a Venom trilogy? That's no. A big <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you'd you... like to say to Avi Arad? Yes, yeah, stop it. No, I tell you, I, I will tell you my exact thoughts because I hated myself for thinking this. But as the credits were rolling on Venom Three, and I know these, this isn't fair, and they're not the same company or whatever. But I sat there and thought, you know, we live in a world in which that in Batgirl world. movie that looked really promising will never get released. But this mm. shit got made, and I had to watch it. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> You're genuinely right. And that's genuinely made me want to lower the score because fuck this system and fuck this company <laughs> and fuck this mess of a universe. It's just fuck Sony. Like, they've never known what to do. It's just no. like, it's the, it's no. the, we own these characters, so we're just making the movie for the hell of it. It's like they when, are. um, you know, when Fant Forstick was made just because they didn't want to give the rights back, so they had to have a movie mm. in production. So I was like, fuck it, we'll it's... just make a Craven movie. Like, what the fuck's Craven going to be like? <laughs> Craven the vegan. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's something to do with Craven, I think. It's something to do with a, a zoo, I think. I would respect all these movies a lot more if every single post credit scene was just um, bloody Adrian Toomes blaming someone else. But yeah, the thing is, to though, George, they seem to be heavily implying that what they're trying to do, and if the money's if the films make money, they might end up doing this, is that they're leaning towards a Sinister Six versus Null movie, and. Um. I hate myself, but part of me is kind of like, that might be interesting just because how much yeah. of a train wreck might it be to watch like Juno Temple's Flash Venom symbiote, Michael Morbius, <laughs> the vulture from the MCU, Craven the Hunter, and like and Jake Gyllenhaal's there. corpse. And like, and um, Dakota Johnson's Madam Web fighting <laughs> Andy Circus's, you know, weird, I will destroy you all, ultimate, you know, universal threat. <laughs> it's like, what are they going to do? 
<laughs> a sinister Megazord. Yeah. Do they even do they even need a bad guy in this film? Like Null. Like he's just because he's mm. the god of all symbiotes, and he, well, he's the symbiote creator. But he doesn't do anything. He doesn't. He, sits, he literally sits there. Michael with his said hair, he sits there. He, he sits waits. There like this. He's the impetus for the whole plot, but like, yeah. I mean, he you do kind of need him because, like I said, he is the impetus for the plot, which is that he's imprisoned, and if you get the Codex by killing, you know, Venom and Eddie combined, that's it, end of the universe. He's gotten free. But like I said, even then, they don't like they, they just completely disregard their own internal rules and don't explain things. So, like I said, I found it so egregious when he's opening portals in this supposed prison and going like, go through my xenophage dog things and find him. And I'm like, stopping you doing that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't. I've not got my shoes on. <laughs> and then, like I said, at the end of the movie, when it's like for the supposed big reveal, you can finally see his face. And he's like, well, you've had it now, planet Earth, because I am awake. And I was like, you've been awake the whole time. It was your plan. <laughs> <laughs> I've been awake the whole time. Yeah. Because people were like debating whether like Noah was going to destroy the the spum, and then mm. they would like flee to the MCU for help, and that mm. would sort of mesh into the battle world doomsday bullshit we're going to get. I don't think so. I think basically what the somebody somewhere, possibly the writer of this movie, got really what? excited when they got really excited when they picked up a comic and were like, "Ooh, this character Noah, that could be like our version of Thanos." He's like, you know, universal level threat. He's usually got people like the Silver Surfer that you call in to go up against him. And let's use him as our version of Thanos. And then nobody sat them down and was like, you do realize that the characters that we have to have fighting him are shit. <laughs> like, and the only character that anyone shit? really liked was Tom Hardy, and he's no longer in it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what, what is an ineffective vampire, a blind woman with psychic powers, a weird flash symbiote thing? What are they going to do against this universe ending threat? <laughs> Just... Because not much, I would imagine, you know? Well, Craven will do it. Craven will hunt you. <laughs> Craven, oh, exactly. Cool. There's some, yeah, some dude, just some Russian dude. Some dude with, some Russian dude with a knife. He wins. <laughs> <laughs> no, but if, like, all jokes aside, if Aaron Taylor Johnson has the lion vest that shoots lasers out of its eyes, do you forgive <laughs> everything? <laughs> do you forgive everything the spam has ever done? If if the rumors are true and it turns out that like they've made Craven the Hunter basically a vegan and he's just like hunt we shouldn't hunt these animals, they should be our friends and oh fucking hell, no. Then I, I'm gonna kick the fucking chairs in the cinema until somebody gets hurt. <laughs> just... Craven the vegan. No! Craven the vegan 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 hunter. Vegan hunter. <laughs> it really does seem like the implication is that like Craven's dad, who's obviously a bad dude in the comics and stuff as well, is, is hunting people. And he's like, I will not be like you, father. And the rhino is like leading this group of poachers or whatever. And he's like, we should not harm the animals. Ignore the fact that my vest is a lion. It's all purely just... Yeah. Ignore like, the lasers color. coming out of these eyes. <laughs> so it's going to be something along the lines of like, he's going to probably watch some poor lion die and be like, no, to, to honour you, I will wear a vest that looks like your face or something stupid. <laughs> To honor this, to honor this tragic death that I hate, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut open your lion's head and wear it on my shoulder, and put this, and put this, and this gun. Wow, I hope that's the movie. I hope that Craven the Hunter stabs Canal with his knife. <laughs> Big sharpie, pointy knife. I mean, if the thing is though, if you know Marvel could have loaned Sony Blade. Or Kit Harrington's Black Knight, like mm. maybe maybe there'd be a character to like in this bomb. Like, come on, guys! They've got their own version of Null in the MCU because they kind of had to because they decided to do Thor: Love and Thunder. Which, okay, I know it's not a popular movie, but they had to feature Gore, which means they had to have the Necro Sword, which means there has to be some obscure. And yeah. they didn't name him; it was like, oh, it was a Dark Lord that I stole it from. But that's yeah, got to <laughs> <laughs> Even at the end of this movie, Noel picks up the Necro Sword, and I'm like, we saw that in Thor Four, <laughs> and we saw the the Dark Blade in um, that Ebony cave. Blade. That you yeah, show you want to do this, Mister Whitman? My movie's never going to get made. <laughs> anyway, who's that? Is that my wife, Rose Leslie? Oh no, Tom Holland, what are you doing here? I'm sorry, Mister Mister King Harrington. Oh, hello, Mister. <laughs> hello, Mister. I loved you in the Game of the Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> but no. Who, who I mean, are you? Uh, uh, you was Billy Elliot, wasn't you? I didn't know what was happening to me, boys. 
I have to mention one more thing, and it's probably you. You guys probably know this because you've probably listened to the Mister Sunday review, which I think is what clued me into this. Is that there's an entire thing where Chiwetel Ejiofor has this uh, like you know ominous sounding phone call and just goes, "Deploy the six. This is a great threat," <laughs> and it's kind of like. It's obvious that there's been, like, I think Mr. Sonny said, there's obviously been reshoots, and what they were going to do was have, like, six, you know, secret agents that were powered by symbiote power or attached to their own symbiotes, and then they were told, we can't afford to do that at the start, at the middle and the end of the movie. Like, we can have one or the other. And part of me, when I heard that in the movie, I was like, are they hinting at, like, deploy the Sinister Six? Have they already yeah. assembled a kind of team? Turns out, no, it's just six random special ops dudes. <laughs> that would have been cool. They, they weren't Sinister They'll enough. be the next They're six. Ex the Expendable Six. Well, should we <laughs> look to the future? <clears throat> is, is there a future, though, in all honesty? Is there a future? I feel I like there should be. For I us. really want to see. I really want to see Beyond the Spider Verse, but done, you know, respectfully to the animators and stuff, without you know killing them. <laughs> Let's get that film out, finish that trilogy, and then Sony, can you please just give Marvel their toys back <laughs> after that? If you want to make Spider Verse four, then make Canal animated. Do you do you think that eventually, like the films will just get worse and worse, and then like Marvel, not Marvel will just get these characters? Them. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I don't. I it just. I don't know. I have no faith that these things won't just keep making money. And Sony are clearly not interested in critical response. All they care about is you know the green, the money. And if they're still yeah. making money, they'll just churn out shit after shit. The real telling thing will be what happens, and it does happen eventually. I mean, we even saw it with the Transformers movies, which was disappointing because they started making good ones, but because they'd made five <laughs> increasingly shit ones, people stopped seeing them. So eventually, people I think will learn and. You know, they'll release a movie into this one universe and just nobody will go and see it. They'll be like, nah, fool me seven times. Shame on you, you know? So, in terms of the future, we've talked about Craven. Are we excited for Craven in any capacity? No. Uh, well, I'm excited to see a more faithful version of the Rhino than we got with that weird ultimate robot thing from the end of Spider Man. I mean, it's Spider Man 2. I am the Rhino! Oh no, I'm in my underwear. <laughs> oh, this is Spider Man. Um, I mean, we've also, in terms of TV, we've got Spider Man Noir. Oh, I just don't get that, that at all. Spum, though? That's bum. In, the, in terms of te fun. television series, Damn one it. season, now, Spider Man, now I'm not excited for Spider Noir, eight episodes. I'm not excited for Spum Noir. But I like the casting of it because they've just cast Lamorne Morris out of New Girl as well as Nick Cage and stuff. So it's yeah. got a decent cast. It might work, I guess. But it's also set in a different universe. It's set, oh, in, Christ. set in an alternate universe based on 1930s New York. Yeah, it would have to be. That's the entire shtick of Spider-Man. No. <laughs> it's already distanced itself from the spum. So Thank it's not God. spum of the past. It's, yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. Um, other series in development, Silk, Spider Society, um, Silk and Black. It's already been ditched, to be honest. Yeah. Um, in terms of the films, let, let's fucking, let's dig into these. Do we want them? Do we not want them? Are we, you know, do we not give a fuck? Um, Sinister Six. I mean, it's been like up I and down for the last oh. 11 years. Like I said, I hate myself for it, but part of me wants to see what kind of a train wreck oh. it would end up being. Yeah. Who would be your members of the six? Well, and, uh, who would I pick or who do I think they're going to pick out of what they've got? <laughs> out of what they've got, but you can, you can add in one that's not existing yet. Oh, Okay, so it's probably going to be Vulture, because that's why he's crossed over to that universe. Um, yeah, Morbius, because they're making him a good guy. Some kind of symbiote, whether it be either a reconstituted Venom or Juno Temple's version or whatever. They'll be a Flash symbiote. Yeah. Um, so that's a Craven, the hunter, obviously. Uh, I'm assuming Madam Web, so that's like five. And for the sixth, I, I, I'm going to go big. I'm going to say finally make that big wheel movie the most ridiculous. <laughs> yes, the big wheel. The big wheel. Yeah. <laughs> big wheel. The, the world's stupidest Spider-Man villain who just, you know, I just can't help but love him because of how crap he is. He is just literally a, you know, a street kid with a giant wheel. <laughs> so. Assemble. And then you could have Michael McIntyre play the wheel. <laughs> Just a bunch of celebrities just sitting isn't right next to him. You know? Isn't it funny how we're all in these spawn films and I don't even see a Spider-Man and no Spider-Man in the spawn films? Don't you just hate it when you get to roll in the film? <laughs> it is the spawn! 
Is it is this pub? And I, it's literally a roll because I roll in my wheel. In my wheel, yes. The new celebrities ask me questions. <laughs> Annoying prick. Um, 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 the last update for this was December 2018. Following the success of Venom, uh, waiting on Goddard to be ready to direct <clears throat> it, moving forward with the project. That I don't think makes sense, really. Um, Nightwatch. Um, who is Nightwatch? Who is Nightwatch? By September 2017, Sony was actively developing a film based on the character Nightwatch with script from Edward Reichel. Sony wanted Spike Lee to do, fuck, you know, direct the film. I don't even know who that is. Is that, is that not the character Bick, Bick Red Man? Dick Grayson, but legal ramification. Is it not Nightwing, but Nightwatch? I don't know. You know who the hell is Nightwatch? Is, is it really weird project? Weird Marvel characters that I don't know that I've seen in like sticker collections and things, and it, it's ringing a vague bell. So the problem is not even an animated character, so that's not working. Bad news. Spike Lee yeah. is no longer involved by October of that of 2018. Oh, Devastating. No. Who's going to spend an entire movie criticizing white people now? <laughs> Shit. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, Jackpot. By August 2018, Sony oh. was creating a film centered on the character of Jackpot. He's actively looking for a writer. Mark Guggenheim, a writer for on the Jackpot movie, uh, comic books, mm. is revealed to be writing the screenplay in May 2020. Jackpot is a stupid was. idea in the comics. If they do it in a movie, I, I'm not saying it. <laughs> no. Oh, well. So he had been working on the film for two years already by that point, and then nothing. Untitled Roberto or... Orsi project in March 2020. Sony hired. No, No. get out of here with that guy. (laughs) Wait, it might get better. Lost Transformers and the Star Trek Spider Man 2 co writer to write the script for an untitled Marvel film that will be set in the spum. The plot will be based on a property from a different corner of the Marvel universe that Sony has access to (laughs) rather than a character affiliated with the Spider Man like Sony's other Marvel films. So, who who do we think this could be? Madam Web's husband. Mr. Webb. It's, Mr. Webb. It's, Mr. Webb. it's the Mark Webb origin story. I'm going to direct this film about Spider-Man. I honestly don't don't know that... I didn't know they had anything left. I know for a while they had the rights to Namor, but then they just didn't make anything, so he ended up in Wakanda Mr. Forever. Negative? But the Mr. Negative Spider-Man. They're saying away from Spider-Man. Yeah, away so from what Spider-Man. else did Sony used to own? I just think the only I ever knew of was Namor back in the day, but they definitely don't anymore. No. Um, so I don't they know. own him name more. <laughs> um, <laughs> get, get in the comments. Who could, who could this be? The the spum the spum film that's not a spum. Um, I'm with Olivia Wilde project. Oh um, yeah, she was. Well, that was supposed to be a Madam Web movie, but then it didn't kind of come to, or a Spider Woman movie. I think based on Jessica Drew. Eventually, they said it might be. Yes, who becomes uh, Madam Web in the comics anyway? So. Yeah. Signed on to develop and direct a female-centric Marvel film for Sony with her writing partner, Katie Silberman. Uh, the project had been high priority of the studio since early 2020. It had been believed to feature the character Spider-Woman. But then Harry Styles wanted to be in it, and they cancelled the project completely. Okay. Um, El Muerto. This is the famous Mexican one, I'm assuming. <laughs> the character who's appeared in a single issue of a comic. <laughs> wow. Mate, look, wow. Sony own him, so he's going to come out. After Sony executives were impressed by the performance of singer Bad Bunny in the studio film's Bullet Train, yes. they became interested in having him star in another high-profile film. They settled on the minor, that's putting it lightly, 007, <laughs> Spider-Man-related character, El Muerto, a wrestler who has superhuman strength and looked to move quickly on the project. Bad Bunny made a surprise, in quotation marks, appearance at Sony CinemaCon panel in April 22 on, to announce the film with a scheduled release date of January 12th, 2024. Fuck, was the film good? <laughs> was it good? Was that good? It didn't even exist. I remember actually when you said it was done because they uh, they did announce it wasn't going to happen, and then it, it was one of those weird situations where they announced it's definitely not happening. It's been cancelled. Then they announced it might still be happening, but not with Bad Bunny. And then I think the latest is they announced no, it's just not going to be made after all. So uh, in October, Jonas Curran and Gareth Dunn it Al Cocker. Sorry if I said your name wrong there. Gareth with multiple R's uh, were hired respectively to direct and write the film. Bad Bunny said in March 23 that the film had yet to enter production with his publicist confirming that this was as at a standstill but still definitely in development. The film was then pulled from Sony's release schedule in June due to Bad Bunny's touring schedule and the 2023 writers Guild of America strike. Bad Bunny was no longer involved by July uh, this is a fucking this is a roller coaster. This <laughs> story. The yeah. film re-entered development by January twenty-four, 
after further revisions to the script with Sony intending to it to be a standalone film similar to the other Spum films. But still set in the Spum. Well, see, they're all set in different universes anyway, though. That's the really weird thing. Like, they, they imply that Venom and Morbius might be in the same universe, but Madame Web definitely isn't. So... <laughs> but then Madame Web should be, she should be the, the white woman Nick Fury of this. And she can, because that's her character. She's the one, she's the that's one between. Yeah. She's yeah. the one between. Yeah. yeah. She's, she's like Doctor Strange, but A blind. <laughs> and blind. Yeah. Blind. Blind Doctor Strange. Untitled Hypno Hustler film. <laughs> Hypno Hustler, I forgot about that. <laughs> In December 22, Sony had revealed to be developing a film centered on the character Hypno Hustler, with Donald Glover set to star and produce. And Miles Murphy set to write. Glover previously portrayed Aaron Davis in Spider-Man Homecoming and made a live-action cameo appearance in Across the Spider-Verse as a version of Aaron Davis the Prowler. That's the end of that. Um, other pro- This is the under the other projects. Sony was considering a film centred around Mysterio um, in June 2017 with Jake Gyllenhaal cast to reprise his role from Far From Home. In December 2018, a spin-off film from the MCU films or the animated Spider-Verse film starring Spider-Man's Aunt May was suggested, a notion Sony's previously referred to as silly. <laughs> how they how they say that is silly and none of the other ones. <laughs> it's baffling. Yeah, that's silly, but let's make the hypno-hustler move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Let's make that non-silly. But would you not watch a hypno-hustler film just for the shits and giggles? It sounds amazing, but I don't know the character, so I'm com- I would be blind. But I, I, I'll sum up the character for you right now, Connor. You know, like hypnot- hypnotism. You, you got this yes. right. And you know, like being yes. a hustler. <laughs> wow, we have to look Maybe. at his bling and be like, "Oh my god, I'll do whatever you say." The movie would literally send you to sleep and then rob you, <laughs> <laughs> and, and then make you pay for sex with a woman. <laughs> oh. Just a standard Tuesday night at Cineworld. That really isn't it. Some <laughs> tagline. Spum tagline. The spum tagline. Um, do we want any of those films to happen? No. Hypno Hustler. No. If you had to suggest one Spum film, like from any character that doesn't exist, yes. like, what would you want? I just told you, Big Wheel. <laughs> just the Big Wheel. Um, big, Michael McIntyre's Big Wheel. Beetle. Anonymous Spider Man villain, minor Spider Villain. Beetle. <laughs> just a mm. random project, like on screen, probably never see. Yet yeah, Hypno Hustler was in discussion, so no idea. Uh, hmm. Feels an interesting character at times. It could work. Yeah, yeah just, just yeah. I'd, I'd like the Rhino from Craven to get his own film, but it's like a, um, it's like Catch Me If You Can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, like with Catch Me If You Can, Tom Hanks has to catch him. <laughs> but it's just the actor Tom again. <laughs> <laughs> He's not even playing a character. It's just, it's just beloved American actor Tom Hanks. Trying to catch the rhino. Chameleon. But Chameleon was kind he of was, uh, the driver in thing. Far From yeah. Home. He's there. The, mm. No, Chameleon is definitely in Craven the Hunter because they're related. Yeah. Sure. I don't know. They've they're already revealed yes, they are, in the comics. Like, oh, yeah, oh, he is. Right, is he played yeah. by the Far From Home guy? No. That's just a bloke called Dimitri then, isn't it, really? Just Dimitri, yeah. yeah. But no, I'm sure. I'm sure I'm and not, nothing more, yeah. Um, who else? Who else could we have? Madam Web again, but it's. <laughs> and been, every Madam Web, that's the thing. It's you can use, like they use you know, Web, fair enough. But there's been Julia Carpenter, I think, has recently been Madam Web, and I think Jessica Drew might have been at one point. <clears throat> Excuse me. Scorpion. Yeah, Scorpion. Scorpion. Scorpion was yeah. about it way back in Homecoming. Yeah, and then yeah, he's just sitting there doing fuck all. He's, got, do... he's got something to do with Michael Keaton, I think. Unless you do like Calypso, I don't fuck knows. Yeah. I'm assuming Calypso is going to be in Craven the Hunter as well, because again, they're heavily linked. Yeah. Maybe yeah. Craven the Hunter is the Nick Fury of this universe. Or maybe we'll Tosh. never know. Hydro Man. Yes, do the actual elementals. Well, they were kind of in No Way Home. No, but actually they do are. them because they were fake apparitions and they were holograms. So do them, but have them be like the anti Fantastic Four. And then you do the anti Fantastic Four versus the anti Avengers in the Sinister Six. And then, and then Noel just kills them all. A villain that I'd like to see in the future, whether it's Spum, MCU, whatever, is Mr. Negative. I'd like to see a film around Mr. Negative. I don't like that character, to be honest. I'm, I'm not... No, I'm point. not sure. <laughs> Do you know what I'd like to see? Living Brain. Phage. That's all I want. Well, go I watch Venom 3. I want the Phage trilogy, Mike. Well, <laughs> I want Tom Hiddleston to play 
whoever is possessed by phage and for him to fight laser and blow up and then use a door against acid. Man wolf. Yeah. Oh. The sad thing is, Man Wolf is actually tied to Venom in um, it's either the cartoon or uh, some kind of adaptation. Because like Man Wolf's story is that John Jameson, J. Yeah. Jonah Jameson's son, goes to the moon and, and then he... becomes a werewolf. Yeah. <laughs> but like it's that moon mission that on which I think in the cartoon they get the symbiote. Because obviously they didn't do Secret Wars till season five, so it had to be like, oh, the goo is stuck to my space shuttle in which I went to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because then then they they allude to that in <clears throat> the Raimi films, but it's just like oh, he's just an astronaut, and we're never actually going to see. Yeah. yeah, because you you in, you fucking introduce his son in the second one for him to not bring back the veteran. Yeah. It's just a and he would have had reason to be pretty pissed considering his wife left him at the altar for Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We're rewriting history, but we're not rewriting the spun. Let's do a version of Spider-Man 3 where it ticked off Werewolf is trying to get back at Spider-Man for stealing his girlfriend. That would have been cool. <laughs> if I, oh yeah, I don't know. They'll, whatever character they do, they'll fuck it up. So there's yeah. not much There's not much point in any of this, really. Sorry for completely wasting everyone's evening. But um, overall, would you recommend anyone watch this bum? It's, it's hard to see. I mean, some of them are kind of like they might be fun if you were just having some friends around, having a few beers and chucking it on Netflix and not paying any extra money for it, you know, but not all of them. But yeah, I mean, it's what I recommend. No, I, I couldn't in good conscience recommend doing it because yeah, no, there's better ways to even have fun. Let's be fair. <laughs> True. Um, Connor? No, not even for Tom Hardy. Sorry, ladies. Not for Tom Hardy, no. even. Oh, we forgot to mention Tom Hardy's hilariously meta joke in Venom 3, which, uh, apologies for spoiling it, but yeah, the fact that, Ven <laughs> for some reason, Venom can't make clothes in the Spum universe, even though it's always been one of his abilities. So Tom Hardy has to knock out, like, a, a bouncer guy and dress in his, like, steal his clothes and dress in a suit, and uh, the symbiote just gives it, like, uh, oh, you look like you could be voted world's sexiest man, and Tom Hardy's like, I've been voted sexiest man before. Like, oh, hilarious, you went meta. Lovely. <laughs> well, and that is the best place to leave the spum. Far behind <laughs> with far Tom from, Hardy. Far from your home. With sweaty Tom Hardy. Yeah. Very sad. Eating lobster. Eating a lobster. Eat. Everyone, we, raise We your made lobster. it to New York, buddy. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we made it, buddy. We made Why it. didn't they just flat out just do... Because the only reason you have fucking Lady Venom is so that Venom and um, Eddie can kiss. So why didn't you just flat out just make them in a relationship? <laughs> That was the first time. Maybe that's going to be the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> because in the, in the second one, all he does is beat him up like an angry boyfriend, and Eddie is the fucking, you know, the woman in the in the horrible relationship. Fifty symbiotes of grey, fifty shades of symbiote. I mean, you know, Madam Madam Web, she she was she was in the <laughs> old fucking sorry. Fifty Shades. BDSM, but the SM stands for symbiote. <laughs> BD, yeah. BDS bum. <laughs> Well, uh, Michael, Big where can the good people find you? Oh, well, uh, you, can, you can find me usually a lot calmer and less sweary on my two podcasts, Hit or Miss Star Trek on YouTube or the Silver Screen podcast on YouTube or, you know, wherever you find your podcasts. And uh, sometimes, yeah, occasionally chatting to my friends. And if not, they're sometimes on our podcasts as well. So there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. And Connor, where can the good people, if they want more spam, where can they go and get spam? Um, from the spum dealership exactly yeah amazon hgmb um no i mean maybe from our channel um pacey sheep that you somehow find found um email us your sony movies at nerdbiblecontact at gmail.com we'll definitely try and have a word and get them made um send me your big uh, wheel fanfic do it <laughs> when you type in what is the spum it just comes up with semen Exactly. That, that that's that's great. That's that's the through line of the trilogy. Venom did love Tom Hardy. Yeah, that's the through line. Tom Hardy getting splashed with acid like it's some kind of bukkake video. There we go. And like a good bukkake video, they must all end, unfortunately. <laughs> but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next week in a different universe. In a different universe. The universe of that spawn. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.